Do you remember the 21st night of September? Well, you will because the darts, wind and fire is most certainly going to be hurling around here at the Modus Super Series. And what a day we have got ahead of you. Two sessions of tungsten tension on this tenacious first day of arrows lobbing. And this is what we've got this afternoon. Alex Small is a former finalist here in Portsmouth. Can the wild card be the joker in the pack this week? Shane McGurk is improving upon every appearance here at the Super Series. Can he finally move over the line and progress into Champions Week, having lost the final to Steve West last time out? Chris Rickerton has shown glimmers and glimpses of his quality, his high finishing, his forte this week. Can he marry them up with results in Group C? Makua Suzuki hasn't quite lived up to the player, which saw her average in excess of a ton of the Women's Series of the weekend. But can a new group bring new life into the miracle? As for Cordeke, he missed double 12 for the nine in Group A. He hopes he won't be missing out on finals night. And we're also going to see Ricky Palmer on his debut here at the Super Series. For one man, it's definitely not a debut here in this church for Phil Bars. Phil, great to see you with us once again. And this is an interesting group. I think a group where everybody will fancy their chances. Yeah, great to be back, Henry. It's a really intriguing Group C. You can make a case for all the players. Obviously, Ricky on debut. It's going to be interesting because we've seen that stage behind us do weird and wonderful things to people on debut. It does take a little while to settle down here, but I'm looking forward to it. Most certainly. Right, let's see how this week's broken down because we have seen our first player progress through to finals night and that is Andreas Harrison who made his way through Group A yesterday and perhaps the best starts we've seen from him here at the Super Series as well. Yeah, he, he was the most consistent in Group A and like you said there, he has been the most consistent. He's been here as well. His finishing was really key to his performances. The scoring was steady yet not spectacular but it was the, the constant finishing with three darts in hand where we've seen players combination finishing be good, but he was so consistent when he needed to be. Most certainly, and as far as Group B is concerned, we'll talk about that, of course, a little bit more as the afternoon develops, but that's going to be a nasty one to see you guys do, because Mike Gillett's in some really good form at the minute. Yeah, look, Group B, everyone says it's an advantage because the odds are in your favour, but I'm not sure it is this week, because, again, it's going to be absolute carnage there to try and pick three from five. It could be a low points total, because they're all going to take points off each other, so maybe it could be a, maybe a six sneaks you in from this one, but look, time will tell with that. Most certainly, and we're going to watch that action from 10 o'clock tonight. But our focus this afternoon is very much on Group C and a really intriguing group as well. Let's see what the odds compilers make of this afternoon's proceedings because I go with Shane McGurk as a favourite, perhaps unsurprisingly, because the last time we saw him here, he got to the final. We were on comms for that final against Steve West. Narrowly missed out, just lost it, didn't he, in that final a little bit. Yeah, look, Shane McGurk is the class act in this Group C. We talk about doing it over course and distance, and he's done that. Series 3 got to finals night, lost in a semi-final with John Worsley. Series 4 got to the final, beaten by Steve West, and that's no disgrace at all because Steve West has done some amazing things here at the Super Series. But just looking at his scoring power, that it is far above anyone else's if he gets it right, but he has to get it right is the thing. We've seen him go from a 99 average to that 77, 78. If he can find a steady B game and just that power scoring leg on, leg off, I think he wins it. Where would you say Alex Small's game's at at the minute? I'm interested to see Alex because we've seen fits from him. Um, there's little spurts. Obviously, he won the Red Dragon Championship Champions two years ago now, and that cutthroat format will help him. Although it's a little bit longer here, it's, it's still you have to get out of the blocks quick. But a bit like Ricky Evans this year, where he slowed down a little bit, I feel he may need to just do that a little bit more and just set the first start. But look, he's an explosive player, so I'm looking forward to seeing him. It'll be interesting to see. Right, let's have a look at today's bet build. It's a very ambitious one as well. These are the bets that you've been putting on the exchanges. And I'll tell you what, our punters at home have been very bold today, 15 to 1. But actually, if you break down the bets, it's not actually as ambitious as maybe what that bottom line says. Yeah, look, selection one, Shane McGurk, most 180s I like, purely because of the way Chris Wickenden's dart sits. The first dart has to be perfect. If he's above, he switches a lot. So I like that one. Makura Suzuki over 0.5 180s against McGurk. Yesterday, she hit a 180 in every game she played in. So I can see why they're picking that one. The bottom one, again, Makura over again. The same reasons as the first one. So 15 to 1 is a little bit of value there. Look, it's all on the first one 
for me because if Wickerden gets that first start right, it could be dangerous. But if he's above all the time, he's going to be running to 19 to a lot. 18 plus big gamble aware. If you're going to have a flutter on the Super Series over the course of the day. Right, our first game of the afternoon sees Makura Suzuki, the Japanese miracle two-time champion of the world. And well, women's match play finalists as well earlier on this year. Look at it, we discover some of the form that we saw from her at the weekend, averaging in excess of 101 in a women's series event. She takes on Ricky Palmer, debutant in this competition, brother of Ryan. And Phil did well, what Phil does best, catching up with the players. And he caught up with Ricky earlier. Ricky, here we are, debut at the Moda Super Series. Excited? Yeah, definitely very excited. Yeah, looking forward to it. Look, your brother's already played here and obviously he plays this evening. Have you um, spoke to him about what to expect? Yeah, yeah. I'll be coming early this morning as well. I have a little look around and um, yeah, he's, he's told me what to expect and he's told me I've got to be on my game. So I'm going to be on my game. <laughs> How did you get here? Obviously the ADC system yeah, is, so, is brilliant. Yeah, so I've, yeah, it's br fantastic. It's a brilliant, brilliant platform for players like myself and other players. Um, yeah, I qualified for a qualifier to get here um, for the title for a title fight on a title fight title match on um, Saturday against Ryan and um, yeah so I get the two days as well so it's really good sibling rivalry at its best yeah brilliant I can't wait honestly I can't wait look obviously the way the ADC has exploded it's given us here at the Super Series and players a platform to really showcase themselves is that felt in all these vaults and these qualifiers as well yeah yeah it's, it's, it's brilliant it gives it, it gives the normal person an opportunity to show what they can do on the dartboard. Um, so you've got all the professional players, you've got us, and then, yeah, it gives everyone a chance, and it's absolutely brilliant what they do. Have you set yourself any expectations for this week? Um, I'm going to do my best. I'm going to go out there, I'm going to do my best. I know on my A game is good, um, and I'm going to do my best. I, I'm looking forward to the challenge, to be fair, and looking forward to the next three days. Ricky, wish you all the very best here, Thank mate. you. And so Palmer and Suzuki gets our afternoon's action underway here at the Super Series. 25 live matches to broadcast to you here on the Super Series YouTube channel between now and around about 1 a.m. Kicking off then with this Battle of England and Japan and in the commentary box alongside Phil Bars. It's a very good afternoon to Chris Murphy. Afternoon, Henry. Afternoon, everybody. And indeed, welcome along to a double dose of darting delights here at the Moda Super Series. And it is Super Suzuki. The first player in action, Makuru, looking to build on a better day yesterday in Group A and maybe stake a claim for a Saturday night spot here in front of an audience. A debutant to take her on, Ricky Palmer, 38 years of age from Bristol, brother of Ryan Palmer, who will be in action this evening. As for Suzuki, she needs no introduction as a two-time world champion. And as I was saying, Phil, he does seem to have started to grow first into like the week a first. after a, a very slow start. Yeah, Game completely on. agree, Chris, that it was a very slow start to Monday, improved Tuesday, but yesterday I thought she was slightly unlucky not to add maybe two or three points more to One out of them what she did. The scoring power certainly seemed to be back yesterday, which is a feature of her game when she gets it right, and that looks like a perfect first start. And a perfect second. 125. The thing she was struggling with on Monday was she was throwing a lot of darts in the five segment, low fives as well. Matthew Edgar, who was with us, really highlighted that being a problem. It was a problem that she 57. solved yesterday, really. Much straighter, much neater. Hit a 180 in every single match. Yeah, and some players that you can tell instantly what they're doing wrong that we see the likes of Michael Smith on the last start. But Makuru's action is very deliberate each start is is the same so it's just a case of concentration i think that that late release sometimes comes in while she goes 25 low and left this will be an opportunity early on take a player look he gave a good interview he's been sounded out by the brother of what to expect but 100 I heard paul hinks call game on and he has now and it's a chance isn't it for makiru suzuki to jump on that inexperience and Potential nervousness. Yeah, absolutely. It's like dynamics change as soon as you get on that stage. That you can be confident in the practice room. Your preparation can be second to none. But there's nothing like that match experience. 60. Makuru's had that at the highest level. We've seen her at the lakeside at the Indigo. Ali Pali. Grand Slam. The Winter Gardens. The list goes on. 120. 
and likely to see her again in those tournaments this year. This could be a good warm up for Makuru Suzuki towards a, a lot of time spent in the UK between now and Christmas. That's always been the kind of issue for Makuru. Fifty five. Juggle Ricky the still tip calendar with the the soft tip because in Asia, it's still a huge market. But she seems to have found a, a better balance where we'll come back to that in a minute. That's a, that's a slip and maybe a little bit of nerves there from Ricky Palmer, Chris. Yeah. Double 17 is the remainder. 48. Makuru Rukawa, 116. Didn't find it. Yeah. And, and that is, like you said, a sign. And is this going to be the moment where Suzuki does indeed feed off it? She can't. Interested to see what Ricky Palmer does here because it, it was a tentative attempt at double seven. Six eight. Could split Ricky Ocar thirty four. Yeah, the, the smart money says two. Ooh. It's come the double twelve route. Ten. Yeah, decided to Makuru split. Ocar fifty six. But he's had three darts at double now. I missed a lot. Suzuki loves it here. Double nine. Oh, she thought it was in, didn't she? She did. 38. There was an interesting Review reaction from Ricky 24. there as he walked back round past Paul Hinks. There was a little scratch of the head, which just says to me he's not settled yet. But they're two well-thrown darts. Can he just bounce one in off the barrel? No score. Makuno Yukar, 18. The sky. Well, it's half a dozen darts in his opening leg on debut at the Super Series. The doubles that are hardest to hit, the first and the last. And he hasn't hit the first, but nor has she. Nine. Still, Ricky Ocar, 24. 11 darts have gone begging at the outer ring in this opening leg. Needs to get this done, but that's dragged low. 18. You can McCurry see the frustration all over his face. Very, very anxious opening to this encounter. Double four for Suzuki. Game shot on the first well, leg. Ricky Palmer Suzuki. will be... Kicking himself after missing nine darts to take that opening leg. Second leg, Makuru yeah, to throw first. Game the on. The one from Makuru was only just in. Indeed. She's kind of got away with it. He will be dwelling on that. He will, will not settle until he hits a double. 140. I completely agree. Has hit a double, actually. That's the one that caused all the problems, wasn't it, when he hit the double 16? 30. Yeah, you just felt he was... There was nerves there, so he went ultra-cautious, keeping away from the treble 16, but it ended up causing him more of an issue because he's pulled it into the double. 95. And look, we've seen debutants here at the Modus Live Lounge playing up there for the first time. It does take a little while to set around, that's a good recovery dart there from the blocker. But that's very low from Makuru. Just trying to find the range at the moment, and it's not 36. quite there. It's a much better first dart use of the marker well. 100. To get the sense that Ricky Palmer is just starting to settle here. But when it comes to that finishing, he'll want a crisp, clean finish this time around. Yeah, that's the point. That 45. Know. I know you had a chat with Ricky, brother of Ryan the Lion. What does that make him? The Cub? Yeah, we'll go with that. Uh, will he be the pride of the Palmers? We'll find out over the next couple of days. Four sessions of darts. We 94. could yet see them both play each other, but in order for that to happen, they'd have to make it through to finals night. I think it'd be a Palmer takeover, wouldn't it? Surely all the family and friends would come along as well. You'd like to think so, wouldn't you? 41. Yeah, just going back to what you were saying about Makuru Suzuki as well. Committing to playing on the women's series, she has appeared a lot more in the last couple of years. But also... The PDC have kind of given her too much because 100. she also plays on the Asian Mikuru tour over Kawa there. So 144. Does get in a lot of air miles, Makuru. Yeah, and that was a feature that certainly last year, I don't think she got particularly right in terms of her preparation getting into the UK plenty of time Rikyu for Kawa these women's 96. series events. But 
seems to have addressed that issue this year. However, Ricky Palmer has missed another dart. This needs to go and it doesn't. Makuru Car 76. And the woes go on. It's now naught from 11. And Makuru is going to get two darts for a 2 0 lead. 68. Rikuki Car 9. Hardest thing here is hitting the single one. He gets that. Game shot on the second leg. Finally, Ricky Palmer. Ricky Palmer will be feeling a little calmer. He's landed a double. It's taken him 13 Third attempts. Ricky to third first. Game on. But you know what, Phil? He might have actually got away with this because Makuru could have been halfway there. Instead, it's all square. Yeah, you can see the reaction that 44. he gave. Just to say, there it is. And I'm sure now that double has been hit. He will settle. But I completely agree with you that it was a missed opportunity for Makuru there because she could be at the halfway house. 140. Sixty. Not a good start in response from the two time women's world champion. Sixty. Yeah, looks in a great position to return to Alexandra Palace at the moment as well. 128. Second on the order of merit. Yeah, she is second. She's. I think her her form has kind of gone under the radar because Bo Grease has won so many of the events. People forget how many finals she's One been in. She's only won four women's series events since it started. But the amount of finals she's been in is enormous for Makuru Suzuki. Yeah, absolutely agree there. But 59. Makuru Kawa 161. Quarterfinals, semifinals, finals. It's very rare that she's beaten early. 99. Yeah, it looks like it'll be her. 99. Bow at the Grand Slam as well. However, Fallon Sherrick's not too far behind Makura after winning that final event of the last women's series. Another player we've seen plenty of here Makura in the Super 62. Series. And I, I'm going to extend that point in a moment, but first of all, the most important point is whether it's Makuru who takes this out or whether she gives Palmer a chance at the 110. It's going to be one dart, a double 16. 46. Ricky Ocar, 110. Ricky Palmer, 110. That's unlucky. That's right in the corner of treble three. So Makuru will be back. 78. Third consecutive Makuru break 16. Of Oh, must be severely blocked. Look at that. Game shot Power, the third she found line. Away in there. Suzuki. What a shot from Makuru Suzuki. It's just a double eight, but it is the most incredible dart you may see today. Fourth leg, Makuru to third first. Miracle Game by on. nature. That is an absolute wonder dart from Makuru Suzuki. Yeah, superb stuff from Suzuki. The question I was going to ask you, Phil, is uh, you're a man who's never shy 100. of giving an opinion. Now, are you surprised that Makuru Suzuki's had the the lack of win she's had this week. When you consider how 57. well Fallon Cherokee usually does here at the Super Series, she seems to get to finals night nearly every time. Suzuki's above her on the order of merit in the PDC, so are you surprised that Suzuki's not followed in Fallon's footsteps yet? No, and the reason I 16. say that is purely down to Fallon's mindset. Whenever you listen to Fallon talk, she wants to play against the men. And I just think that she produces her better 56. stuff here because she's playing in an environment she wants to be in. She, that's where she wants her career to be, playing against the men week in, week out. It's interesting, actually, that she does need motivation, doesn't she, Fallon Sherrick? 100. Part, it's interesting. It was actually a defeat to Makuru Suzuki that really motivated her. I was in Wigan. I was commentating at the Women's Series, and from the commentary position, 95. you could see the whole arena. And Fallon drew Makuru Suzuki in a prelim in the third event of the weekend. Lost it. Miss starts to win it. And I saw her and Lorraine Win stanley just walk up to the practice board and basically 85. not leave it for the entire tournament. And then she went on and won the next one. Not a surprise at all. A couple of points from that. That's always been Fallon's 
thing and when you listen to her talk she admits it herself that sometimes it is a motivational thing to, to get on the board but now I think she's found that again which is a great thing for us here and of course the women's series 140 but I just look at the women's game in general I think it's in a great place being spearheaded by Bo Fallon Makuru Lisa now back in a in 85 Makuru Ruka 16 Kira could be starting off in a great vein of form here. Well, she's setting up the same shot. Game oh, shot this time the she gets flag. in the second half. Suzuki. Suzuki having lots of joy on double eight and leading Ricky Farmer by three legs to one. Fifth leg, Ricky to throw first. Game on. Yeah, Makuri's finishing in the last two legs. Has been second to none. But going back to the 140 series, surely. There is an argument now. It has to be seeded, Chris, because Makuru drawing Fallon in in a prelim round just doesn't seem right. Well, yeah, it's, a, it's, it's an interesting one, isn't it? Because seeding suits the top players. It doesn't suit the bottom players. So it depends how it comes about, whether the PDC decide that that is the route to go down. My only fear, I think there's a reason not to do it. I'm just saying my only fear is would it sort of stem the growth in terms of for a new tour like the Women's Series to grow, you do need those players who are not necessarily there to win the tournament. 60. But they want to have the chance to maybe go on a run, maybe play some of their similar standard players before bumping into the big ones. And if it was seeded, they're always going to meet them in the early rounds. 65. Yeah, or to start with, you only have, say you seed the top eight. You don't go a, a massive 16 or 32. You just seed the, the top eight. It's certainly something that will be, I'm sure, 66. on the table for discussions for next year and beyond. But it certainly is, we are already seeing that. 100. Some players emerge from the middle to join those players at the Elite. I think the likes of Robin Byrne are good examples of that. She's won a women's series this year. I think the Irish trio have been brilliant Ricky to Ocar, watch 60. Robin, Katie and Aoife. Yeah, absolutely. Well, if it's Ricky here that we're looking at, looking at tops, it proves 40. too tricky for Ricky. Ricky Ocar, 100. Will McCurry get a match start at the end of this combination? No is the answer. Not the type of player is she that will go for the more... Spectacular routes, even though they might be the more sensible routes. Ricky Ocar, 20. Okay. Makiru going for 54 to leave herself 23. Standard. No score. Right. Makiru Suzuki Ocar. here. She's left herself 23. 11 and a half. And the look she's just given at the scoring screen there, I think she's miscounted. Well, she's, she's misfired here. Right. Nine now. Oh, this is a, this is I think the darting version of taking the scenic route. Nineteen, Ricky Ocar twenty. Could not find the destination of the double. She got herself all in a muddle there. Game shot Ricky on the Palmer fifth leg. Ricky in. Palmer. And you can see the frustration from Ricky there. Six leg Makuru to throw first. And Game the eyebrow on. raise from Makuru Suzuki there says it all. One hundred and twenty-five. Fifty-seven. Trebleless from Ricky Palmer. Is he now in trouble? In a leg. He had to win. One hundred. Eighty. Well, Suzuki still favourite to win the match, and it would be the opposite kind of start to what she had. Sixty earlier in the week, Makuru Suzuki on Monday lost five from five, and that was always going to be difficult to come back from in Group Eight. 
Ninety six. Then all of a sudden, you're looking at the, only the possibility of Group B because the the titles passed you by. It's unlucky because the first start was a perfect guide for her. It's just clipped the wrong side of the wire. Thirty six. And is that the slip that Ricky Palmer needs? Well, he hasn't left the easiest leave here. 40. For all his darts at the treble 20, if he had hit a ton, he wouldn't have left to finish. So Suzuki's got a bit more breathing space. I think one treble would be more than enough. 55. Not that one. Ninety two Makuru Lukar one hundred and twenty five. Sure Happy accident still leaves a finish. Fifty three. Well, Ricky Lukar one hundred and thirty six earlier this week. Ricky Palmer looking to hit it against her and can't do so. Ninety six Makuru Lukar seventy two. But will he get a go? Great dart. Double 18. 36. Two ways she was looking for. Double 9 will win the match. That might actually end up... Ricky O'Carr, 40. ...being a bit of a happy accident in itself because Ricky Palmer, if he doesn't take this out, will give Suzuki three more darts at double. 35. And that's exactly what's happened. Car, the amount of darts missed at double in this match is unheard of. At the Super Series. Is that a blocker? Madhouse to win it. Game shot on the match. Mikuru and Mikuru Suzuki. Suzuki seals victory. A 4-2 win over Ricky Palmer. The Miracle gets the points on the board early in her Group C campaign. Coming up after the break, we're going to see Shane McGurk against Chris Wickerden. Welcome back to the action here at the Moda Super Series. He was in action at times in that first match. 37 darts missed at double between Ricky Palmer on debut and Makuru Suzuki, who managed to get the points in that one. Now, attention turns to...
Group C for Chris Wickenden after he, with Suzuki, fell through Group A into this group for Thursday and Friday. And Shane McGurk returning to the Motor Super Series, the man from Monaghan over on the island of Ireland. Winner on the development tour, nicknamed the Arrow against the Nuneaton thrower, 35 years of age. Winner of two ADC events. And, I mean, I'm going to ask like Shane is first. first. He's kind of grown into the week and he's Game also on. kind of grown into the Super Series because we're seeing a very different version of Chris than the one we saw last time he was here. Yeah, absolutely. However, he's got a tough assignment here because Eight I think Shane McGurk is the class act in this group. See, I think if he gets it right, he's going to be very hard to beat. Yep, it's been... 100. Uh, a finals night player before has got through this group before. May have the knack of doing it. And that'll be difficult. I'll, I'll be honest, I looked 60. at this week and didn't really think there was one big standout player. I think it's really, really open this week. Having said that, I looked at most weeks and thought there was one or two big stand players. 135. And they got through. The other thing with Chris as well, I think it's interesting that it's all on his first start because 100. if it's above, he has to run for cover all the time. It's a very unique way of landing the darts in the board. Yeah. He, 46. We, we'll get to see throughout the day how much of a nuisance a dart above a target is for Chris Wickenden. 100. So there you see that one perpendicular below. It's not going to cause him a problem, but if that one hundred is above Shane the treble, 160. then it would be totally blocked. Whereas if Shane McGurk goes at the top of the treble here, he could use it and guide it in. It's literally rolls reversed for 30. It does Christian mean that 120 can be the perfect shot for, for Chris Wickenden because he can just stack and build his way up. He hasn't got to throw the flatty. Oh, close. But no cigar. 56. Shane McCarr, 130. But you do see him that that's why, why he moved away. He felt he couldn't get the treble and now he's actually left himself a harder finish if he had stayed on the 20s. Yeah, Shane McGurk not found that 65. scoring radar. Chris Yorkar, 64. Yet, 64 for Wickenden, which will be an early break of throw. Two darts, a double eight. That didn't seem a well-thrown dart at all. It seemed very 60. flicky on release. Shane Yorkar, 65. Too good. Not 57. Chris Yorkar, four. Paid the price of being too accurate. This is where Wickenden needs to miss below. If he gets on double one, it's the worst double on the board for him. That's perfect. Just sit one on top. Surely. Two. Shane Yorkar, eight. Built a ladder, but missed the final rung. And now McGurk has another go for double four. And now he wants double two. Well, what kind of thing is going on this Four. afternoon? 37 Pichuka darts two. missed the double in the first game, and they've already missed nine in this one. Is there some kind of magical force field around them? Now, that will be difficult. That will be really difficult. There you see, only a third of the bed to aim at. Game well, the first leg. Chris Wickenden. If in doubt, just blast your way through the middle. Second leg, Chris, to throw first. He really did force it through, didn't he? And all of those darts missed at double. 11 of them before that one went in, and that was the most difficult one. And that's the one he hit. Funny old game. 100. Mind you, we saw over the years the great man himself, Mr. Philip Douglas, do miracle things when we thought he couldn't see a target. 100. Yeah, we've seen some magnificent... Almost impossible darts tossed 85. by Taylor. Match that follows this. Alex Small back at the Super Series. And when 43. he's in town, it becomes a speedy series. I think probably the quickest player we've got. Yeah, I 
Unless Kevin Painter's in a mood. Yeah. Alex Small, maybe Scott Baker would rival him, but I agree. Think 43. Painter did pick up the pace yesterday. We'll see the artist back in action tonight. He went into Group B with Haruki Muramatsu. 80. And we'll be joined by Ryan Palmer, Tommy Lishman and Mike Gillett. Could be an interesting evening, Phil. I'm expecting some fireworks here this evening. One hundred. Chris Wickenden has donned a different shirt, the same type of pattern every day. I wonder if he's packed six. Sixty. How confident is he? They are a bit jazzy, aren't they? Different. Own, his own style. Ninety-five. Just deflected off the dart. Could you pull something like that off, Chris? Oh, I could pull anything off. 40. Chris Yorkar, 78. That look says it all from uh -huh. McGurk. Almost like he heard me. Well, travel 19. 38. And Wickenden has a bit of breathing space here. Time on his side. Nothing's been certain, though, today, has it? 58. Push that Christian McLaren, 40. Again, start one has to be perfect because that becomes awkward. His eyebrow raise says it all. No score. And this Shane time McLaren, he can't find the miracle dart. So McGurk coming back for 120 and an instant break back. I think that's awkward because of the way his darts go in. 100. Again, he probably maybe 40. had more than half, but no, much more than that. And every leg, every player seems to be getting a go at doubles. Double 10 for Wickenden. Game goes, shot on the second leg. Chris Wickenden. But the story of the day is already missed doubles. Third leg changes in first. In Game match. on. Chris Wickenden's missed 11. Yeah, the early theme of this group is whoever can hold their composure is going to have a massive shout because so far we haven't seen a lot of it. 53 darts missed at double in the first match and a half. 36. Sounds like me on a Friday night. Uh -huh. And the scoring hasn't been spectacular 81. in this game either. It has to be said, neither player has had a two treble turn in the match. Yeah, Shane, I maybe understand a little bit more because... 59. Just coming in, it could take a, a while to get up and running, but Chris's scoring has surprised me here. Being, he's already had a Group A campaign, he's used to everything. 85. Yeah, he won five matches, he played some decent stuff. Seems to be all or nothing, though. He hit, I think I can recall three massive finishes that he hit, but then often would go through 43. legs like he has today, where he's missing double after double. 100. McGurk down to a finish first. You just want to get a leg on the board, give himself something to, to build on in this match. 85. Shane Yukar, 150. Last start from Wickenham was a little bit shouldery for my liking. 100. Decided to follow. 134. In terms of where the dart was, but in terms of where his opponent is in the leg, it might not have been the best thing had he hit it anyway. Completely agree that in that situation, if your opponent's on a finish, I completely 140. understand as you say. Shane Yukar, 16. But in terms of ball management, maybe not the best. But he's coming back. Yeah, it worked out very well. The fact he missed it and then hit the treble 18 to get Game these on the third leg. Shane McGurk. At double eight. And Shane McGurk halves a deficit in this second match of the day. Four by Chris the first. first one Game on. Was won by Makuru Suzuki, denying Ricky Palmer on a debut that was played by disastrous doubling. 
60. Again, Wickenden starts Trebleus, opens the door for McGurk. Just took a wicked deflection off the flight. 125. Yeah, two contrasting throws, this pair. There you see Wickenden throws a dart. It lays down, dangles down towards the floor. 134. It means that he couldn't stay there, but he went downstairs with great success. Opposite for Shane McGurk. A dart below the treble 60. is what will block it. He persevered and it didn't work out. That second dart is perfect. 100. As shown there, literally just sit one on top. Well, that's perfect for him. Through the V of the flight and into the bed. 100. I need to think about this here, Chris Wickenden. 44. And didn't. Welcome to the School of Counting. 100. And he's got a... I don't know if he's realised he hasn't reacted, but he knows he's not on a finish. 100. Presented. A potential breakback opportunity for Shane McGurk. 94. Shane McGurk, 116. Yeah, one of those where a smaller number would have left a finish. Single 19 will leave Shane McGurk looking at double top. 96. Chris McGurk, 69. At double for Shane McGurk. Only one from eight so far. 18 for double 16. And a 3-1 lead. 37. Not to be. Shane Yukar, 20. Well, Green shot on the fourth square. leg. Shane McGurk. McGurk levelling things up. He is starting to raise his game a little Three bit. Three flags, Shane, Shane McGurk first. Well. Game on. Look, it's not a spectacular leg of 17 data, but... He has just started to thaw out a little bit. 60. I know he's throwing two low ones there, but in general, his first start has been a lot better in the last leg and a bit. 59. We'll be looking... For a max. 140. Just over pitches. Dart number three, but it is Shane McGurk's first 140 or better visit in four 100. legs, Chris, which is a surprise. Yeah, absolutely. It's taken a long old while. Reminder, Alex Small and Cord Decker, the third match of the day. 134. Play Makuru Suzuki. Is it going to be a battle between two players who've won their opening matches? And if it is, it'll be Chris Wickenden kicking himself ahead of his match with Alex Small. 78. Shane Yukar, 167. Troll 20. Didn't need to go for the ball if he'd hit. But he's quite a maverick, so I think he, he may have had a little go at it. Yeah, and I also think because he hasn't played well, just to give himself something. Bit of a face palm moment there from Shane McGurk. One hundred and eight. Shane McGurk. That's McGurk, in 89. your face from Chris Wickenden for the first maxi of the match, which is getting more interesting. Eighty-six. Not going to happen. McGurk was bossing this leg, but suddenly Chris is in contention. Twenty-four. Yeah, the Chris maximum McGurk, 84. piled the pressure on. He should get at least a dart of the ball, maybe two at double twelve. And he's missed a big number, and that face says it all. Did all the hard 44. work. 44. And then Shane did his own 65. Good work there. Well, he went for the 25 earlier and hit the ball. This time he gets what he wants. 
to earn himself two at tops. That becomes one at double ten. And Game that's shot him. on the fifth leg. Shane, McGurk Shane McGurk has McGurk. turned this tight on its head from two nil down to three two up. Six leg Chris to throw first. Game you on. You just saw when he hit the 25, he gave himself that little come on. One hundred and thirty-four. Haven't been watching this week. Andreas Harrison is already through two finals night, having won Group A earlier in the week. Eighty-five. Pushed by Hiroki Muramatsu, but he's in Group B with Kevin Painter this evening. Might get it. The speaking of Mavericks, Tommy Lishman, an interesting character. One hundred. Ryan Palmer, Ricky Palmer's brother. Also, some other Super Series news. Anton Usland, who was here a few weeks ago plucking his place in Champions League, qualifying for a Euro Tour this weekend. Yeah, good luck to Anton. Over in Budapest. 45. And also, I think we should say good luck to another player on that Euro Tour, Scott Mitchell there for the first time. Never made it to a Euro Tour when he held a Tour card, but he's made it to his first. Yeah, the, the irony, the, the lack of Euro tours cost him his tour card, and now, and now he's there. Well, it's a good leg, this from Shane McGurk. It could be a good leg from both players. 140. Wickenden's Shane McGurk, 100. Stakes, but McGurk has got better and better as the game has gone on, and the game could be over if he ends the match with the best leg by far. Double 10 for a dozen data. Game and he shot gets the it. Match. Shane McGurk. McGurk completes a great escape there. Lost the first two legs in a slow start against Chris Wickenden, but bounced back in style with a 4-2 success. Coming next is Alex Small against Cordeca. Here we go then. Third game. First outing in this group of this week, in fact, for Alex Small, the Welshman, former Red Dragon champion of champions winner, which is some feat. And Cordeca, who has been here all week, playing in Group A. Matthew Egger, before he left, thinks that Decker could do some real damage this week, but he's up against a 25-year-old speedster that is Small. 
Decker, a giant of a man nicknamed the Sheriff, former World Cup star in the PDC. And I'll ask you, Phil, if you agree with Matthew Edgar's assertion that he actually... First leg, Alex, Decker is through first. ...shown enough, despite dropping Game into on. Group C, that he could win the week. I agree. There was a lot to like yesterday. Um, I was here obviously 59. working behind the scenes yesterday, not not with a microphone or a camera. First chance I had a, to have a real good look at him over a sustained period. And I agree, there is, there's a lot to like. 96. Ninety-eight. I think if he can get off to a good start here, it may be a danger. The grouping's good. Forty-five. And he pulls one into the five. Ninety-two. It's interesting that from those darts there, Alex Small, by the look of it, his choice of cover is the eighteens. 57. 128. It's probably a, a quicker switch for him, isn't it? Yeah, I can see the logic behind it. When you are that quick, the eye line doesn't move as much. It's 97. Just a, I think your car, 124. A little shimmy across. 56. 56. Needs another treble here. Can't find. 97. I like your car, 68. Finds the cover, but it may not be enough as Alex Small's going to get two yeah, shot on the first four. leg. Alex Small. Oh, he needs the one, and it is a comfortable hole of throw for the Welshman. Yeah, Second small. leg quarter through first. Game on. Taking the first leg against Big. Cordeca. Probably the tallest player we've ever had at the Super Series. 60. Absolutely. A little hint at that on his shirt there. He's so big, he's giving himself a plural. Not just the big one, the big ones. 33. Hopefully he doesn't hit too many big ones. Perfect first start for Decker. I'd be disappointed if this is only a ton. 140. There we have. 100. 55. I mean, you made 98. Shane McGurk, the standout player in this group. I think Alex Small would have a, an argument with that himself. A man, of course, who's been to a, a weekly final here before, won the Champion of Champions last year. Yeah, I think he would. 25. He would disagree and has the right to disagree. I just think that Shane McGurk's experience here. 25. Just call the car 121. Yeah. Becker has time to do whatever he likes here. What he likes is double 18. Game and that's what he the gets second as well. Call Decker. All square in this one. One other little quirk about Third Alex Alex is is first. the darts Game that he on. uses. Michael Van Gerwen darts and Gerwin Price stems. What a combination 41. that is. <laughs> yeah. Trying to build the the perfect dart player. One hundred. Maybe that was my problem. I used Glenn Durant darts and Matthew Edgar stems. <laughs> One hundred. Of course, Chris Murphy, star of the Premier. League in championships. <laughs> winner. One winner of the Well, starring here, Cordeca, with that fabulous maximum. 
Norwegian. Cordeca, they were born in the Netherlands. It is the, the land of the giants, isn't it? 80. And he has the small throw under pressure here. One under the eight. Did have the small throw under pressure. 141. Well, by far the best contest we've seen so far to date. 96. Out of your car, 124. 18. Bullseye. 99. Call your car, 45. I swear, dart three was in the air before dart two had hit the board. Getting shot on the third leg. Yeah, nicely Decker. done by Decker. And I think that's the sort of, sort of calm head that Matthew Edgar was alluding to. He, he just gets on with it, doesn't he? Well, they caught it through first. It doesn't really matter what Game his on. opponent's doing. We haven't seen him looking like he was phased at any time this week. Uh, sometimes when your opponent misses the ball for a big shot, it can take your eye off the ball, but not for Cordeca. Hey, just casually plonks. One in the big 13, double 16, 14 dart break. 121. 60. 60. Some adjustment 100. from dart one to dart two. One hundred. I think phase is caught by the look of it, does it? It's yeah, just anything that Alex throws at him, he just carries on playing his own 96. game. Ninety-six. That's a good dart for him to follow. One hundred. He'd be disappointed there. Absolutely. Would have expected to have been leaving. One hundred and forty. Very minimum one hundred and twenty. Call the car one hundred and sixty. Would have only needed one treble. Now he needs two, and he's not going to get them. Fifty-nine. Out of your car, forty-four. Double sixteen. Twelve. Call your car one hundred and one. Missed opportunity for an instant break back. But Alex Small, is he going to pay the price? 81. He's normally a 15s man we saw yesterday. Would have left the double 18. Can't find it. 41. So small returns. Alex Small, 32. Game shot on the fourth small leg. Hits. Alex Small. All square, 2-2. Two, two. Been pretty decent this Starting duel. I think all of the first matches in their on. own way have been games that could have been won by either player. I know that they've both finished 4 2 the first 16. two, but you could have seen them. The result being reversed, so it, it bodes well for what could be a quite closely contested group. Yeah. Matt Edgar's rule of three may not work. One of the Well, the Cordeca rule of three worked perfectly at the start of this leg. Three in a bed. One hundred and forty. We have. One hundred and eighty. You and I held our breath there, Chris. Did not dare comment. Caught Decker earlier this week. Caught a car. One hundred and forty-one. Missed double eighteen for a nine dart finish. He's hit six perfect darts again. But he can't make it seven. It's that thing here. We all hold our breath because no one wants to curse it anymore, do they? 93. Yeah, after six starts, it's legitimate to start getting excited. Cordeca a couple of times now has threatened to produce perfection. Six 40. perfect darts in Cordeca, one leg, eight perfect darts in another. But all he will care about is getting this done in 12. Or, well, actually, 15 off you when you look at Alex Moore's score. Don't worry, Court. Game shot on the fifth no leg. Need to worry. It could well be another 
4-2 scoreline because that's a break of throw for Decker, who will now try and serve out this match. Six-leg quarter through first. Yeah, it's just interesting that both Alex Moore's Game winning on. legs, both in 17, but Cause winning legs 15, 14 and 12. And that amounts to the, the, the big difference in the averages. The 3-180s, of course, help. But nobody's been near that kind of standard so far today. And Cordeca is producing the best performance of the opening round of games. 140. Forty-nine. Two of the wrong travels has opened the door here for small. Looking to send us all 59. the way. Fifty-nine. Needs another. One hundred. Door still open. 98. Huge passage of play here. Can he work off of that? 59. And you have to say, Chris, that's a mistake at this point of the game. Yeah. Small. Being allowed the opportunity. 168. Brilliant, brilliant setup shot to get himself down to double 18. A parity and a last leg shootout. 58. I'll your car, 36. And this is what these quick players can do. They can have little surges Game and last shot of the leg or leg. two. Alex and he might have timed this one absolutely perfectly. Seventh and final leg, Alex to throw leg. first. Game on. Forcing the decider with Decker, but Small has the darts in it. 140. And this is certainly one of those surges you were talking about, Chris. But Small has really put the afterburners on here. 41. Breaks back in 13 and then kicks off with a two treble visit. It is advantage Alex Small here. 101. little blitz he's put near on eight points on his average which doesn't sound a lot but 100. in that short space of time has done all the damage 78 yeah, nothing Decker can do all he can do is hope that small stutters towards 57. the finish line he had his brilliant best moment in the middle of the match, but Small may have saved his for the end. 58. You would expect he should start down here. 719s leaves 170. 133. Alio Carl, 124. The big one leaves the big one. But he might not get a go at it. 99. Corder Carl, 170. Then. Right then, Cor. Can you? No. And in that situation, if you were Alex Small, would you have plonked one in the 18 and said, go on then? Well, statistically, Alex Carl, that's 25. exactly what he should have done. More often than not, if you do that, you'll win the leg. Yeah, but he has won the, the match, leg anyway. Small. And he's won the match. Alex Small, a 4-3 victor over Cordeca. Small beats large in the first match for the pair of them in this group. A decent darting duel. Not many mistakes from Cordeca, but Small's charge at the end won him the match by four legs to three.
Welcome back, everyone, to the Moda Super Series. We are three games down on this afternoon session here at the Live Lounge in Port. So this is what we've seen uh, thus far. Victories for Makura Suzuki, Shoma Gurk and Alex Small to kick start the day. Now, this is the first of two sessions that we're going to see today at the Super Series. Group B getting underway this evening from 10 o'clock. So a double dosage of darts for you here from the Live Lounge in Port. So, but we're going to get back to the action here in Group C. Game four of our afternoon session sees Makura Suzuki take on Shane McGurk and down in the commentary box it is Chris Murphy and Phil Butts. Thank you very much Henry and welcome back to all our viewers on the Motor Super Series YouTube channel. Shane McGurk, Makura Suzuki one and two in this early Group C table. But one of them is going to move to four points. The other will have some pondering to do. Yep, Suzuki did win her opening match, but she did miss. First leg, Makuro to throw first. A double in the process. Game on. 16, in fact, in that victory against Ricky Palmer. Shane McGurk. A 4 2 winner against Chris Wickenden. He was 2 0 behind in that game, so. 41. Based on what we we might be thinking this week, that this group could be competitive. This could be a significant match, really. I think this match could have a huge say 58. on the bearing of who qualifies for Saturday night. I think if Makuru can win, then four points after two games 100. puts her right in the mix. One hundred. And already McGurk has just got his nose 100. in front. But that ton puts McCurry back in a good position on her throw. It was just under a little bit of pressure briefly. Forty five. But not now. She can get a good start here. I think we'll see a very different Suzuki that we saw 16. Monday to Wednesday. We saw a better Makura Suzuki each day, to be fair. She has improved day by day for the Super Series, but she's not really had anything to play One for since losing those first five matches Monday. So if she can give herself a little bit of a, a motivation, something to aim at by winning the first couple of games, then I think we will start to see the best of her. Yeah, I completely agree. And those odds of 50 to 1 may look silly. Well, that was the best of Makuru. Will this be the best of McGurk? Double 19. Oof. 139. Almost. Makuru stole car it 20. Away. This one didn't take long to catch light. With Makuru. Game shot on Nine the first leg. Makuru Suzuki. Needs 1 0, but McGurk did miss a dart at a blockbuster. But it is the miracle who holds throw and leads 1 0. Second leg chain to throw first. Game on. Good start. The Japanese star, two time world champion. 57. Second on the women's series, order of merit. Do we call that world number two now, Phil? Or would you go down that route yet? Yeah, I, I would. 60. Would like to see maybe now we have had the Women's Series extended to get a similar kind of ranking to the to the Open Tour where we get that longer... 140. ...order of defined world rankings rather than just seasonal rankings because, of course, at the start of the season, everybody starts on zero. I agree. And on dark rankings... Dot com. I know it's not an official PDC ranking, but they give us the two. We get the race for the match play, which is effectively a seasonal ranking, and we get the Women's Series Order of Merit. So it is there. The the data is available, and I'd like to see it. 82. It. Don't ask me for a Moda Super Series Order of Merit, because that would be an absolute minefield for... <laughs> 140. Kira Suzuki staking her claim to be number one in this group at the moment. 
She's left herself a finish after nine darts. 140. The Kudal well 161. A much better one after 12, but this leg is in the balance. May not be for much longer. Treble 17 and would have left the ball. One hundred and thirty seven thing. Shane your car eighty two. Pressure piled on. Well, that's an interesting decision. And he ends up leaving the bolt. Forty four. Car twenty four. Questionable decisions there from Shane McGurk. Yeah, starting on the bulls of conventional wisdom on eighty two. You're either gonna get two at the outer ring or at least one at the outer ring. He ended up with only one at the bullseye. No score. It's wild from McCurry. Shane McCurry, 38. Bust the score. And Shane McGurk, he's missed a dart of this already in the match. But this time he splits. Getting shot on the second leg. Shane McGurk. They are level at one apiece. And Shane McGurk gets away with some questionable ball management to the hold. Third leg to throw first. Game on. But going back to that point, Murph, the bit I don't get is if you're going to go for the ball at the end of the combination, you may as well go at the start. Because even if you miss, you're still going to have 16. an out to get yourself out of trouble. One hundred and twenty-five. McGurk put the afterburners on. McCurry needs to respond. 100. It's a ton, but it may not be enough. 60. Love that angle of the Shane McGurk throw. Not many moving parts. Nice and straight. As is McCurry's there. The follow through. Sensational. 60. There we get another look at the Shane McGurk throw. It's nice and simple, isn't it? Yeah. 97. Apart from a little bit of movement on that last dart. It's not a walk, is it? He just sort of swings forward with the dart. and Better than full body movement. A lot of players will walk on that last dart. See there, Makura Suzuki, though, after the first dart was way would she adjusted. He knew she'd done something wrong and decided to put it right. Definitely a strength of her game. Well, you see, again, 59. Start, he just sort of starts to fall forward. But by the time he releases it, he's actually back in the right position. So as uh, John Henderson-like, it works. It's a little quirk to his game. Shane McQuirk. 100. Shane McCarr, 160. Well, 160. To take the lead. Another in there. Leaves. Double top. Oh, he beautiful. The third leg. Shane and McGurk. that could be the moment for McGurk. A moment of magic. A magnificent checkout. Fourth leg Shane to throw first. And Game on. 2 1 lead, and he has the darts in leg four. Yeah, stunning 170. Leaving McCurry plenty to think about. But the McGurk average just 41. under the 95. This was the version of Shane McGurk I was expecting. One hundred and eighty. McCurry's second max of this game. Ninety-nine. For those who are watching the top of the show, the bet builder is currently two out of two. If you have eighty-three, a flutter, well, time to get excited. But I hope you did and always do gamble responsibly. Be gambleaware.org for more information on safer gambling. And it is, as always, 18 59. Plus. Fabulous response from Akura Suzuki to having a throw broken from that blockbuster finish from Shane McGurk.
I don't think I've ever seen McCurry phased 60. by anything, Chris. All the times we've seen her, it's just, she's always the same. Yeah. I'm, I mean, this in the n- nicest possible way, but she doesn't often seem aware of much. <laughs> I know exactly what you mean. <laughs> just gets on and throws her darts, doesn't she? That's all she thinks 162. about. 162! bothered what her opponent's on. She carries on playing the leg until she hears the referee call game short either way. It needs a treble. 58. Shane your car, 140. So McGurk's back in this. And the Rob Cross route. Well, Makuru is planning to take out 120. You 71. Know what, Phil? I McCurry think she might. 120. Mystic Murph is back. That's the first part. That's the second. In Inch on the fourth oh. leg, Mikuru Suzuki. Mystic Murph strikes again, as does Mikuru Suzuki. 15 dart break back. Fifth leg, Mikuru Suzuki. Finish. Game on. And it's a, a checkout that turns this tie back in her favour. It's a break back. She now has the darts in the fifth leg, and she's straight in the treble again. This is peak One out of Makura Suzuki at the moment here at the Super Series. Shane McGurk's playing a good game, but Makura Suzuki's more than matching him. Yeah. And there we have it. 95. The 180 can, and with that 15 dart break back, the averages of leapfrogged as well. McGurk was... Comfortably winning that category as well, but not now. 100. A very, very good performance by Suzuki. 140. Because she's playing a player who's, you know, throwing a lot at her here. And that 160 could have been a, a killer blow for many players. You mentioned at the time that she's very rarely phased by anything. And she just got on with her own business. And 100. Done great business. She's down to a finish first here. Ninety-one. Makuru Kawa one hundred and sixty-one. Shane McGurk gives Makuru Suzuki six darts for this one-six-one. A luxury that they all love to be in, not having to take out these big finishes. Sixty-five. Yeah, she's got every chance of regaining the lead here. Some pressure. Oh, just stopping himself. And then slotting 123. one in anyway. 123. This could be the key exchange of the match. Can she find treble 20 for double eight? No is the answer. One thing that maybe I would add 60. to her game. 60, Shane 52. Could advise anything would be just try those double-double routes a few times. She always does just stay on the trebles and she's not giving herself the best chance in that scenario. Can McGurk make a pay? 42. Not on this occasion. Mikuru Yukar, 36. In his first game, double 10 was his saviour. But this time it's not there. Mikuru game shot the, the double 18. Mikuru Suzuki. The miracle leads 3 2. It's one leg away from doubling her points. Six like chain to throw first. Game on. It would be a 100. Very strong start for Suzuki, who will play core decker again in game eight today. Let's see. Fourth match. 100. 10. McGurk low blocks the route to the treble 20, runs for cover. 44. But not very well. It's a perfect first start for Makuru Suzuki. Is it max number three? What is it? Is. 
Katie. Very good performance, this. Average is now up at 95. She's hit 3180s, 3140s. She's had 120 checkout. Nobody can say. 92. But she doesn't deserve this victory. And much of the good stuff has come since Shane McGurk hit her with a 160 finish to take the lead. Would love a treble here. 81. And finds one. McGurk under all kinds of pressure now. Doing his maths. This is the bit that always makes me laugh, Chris. They try and work it out themselves when they, all they've got to do is ask Mr. Hinks. 95. Yeah, can because tell them what they've learned, what they've hit, but not how to, not what to hit, basically. Not how to take out a checkout or how they can leave a checkout. But he's worked that bit out and he's left the biggest checkout. 60. Well, he's Shane already hit 170. The fish for a skin saver. Another. But not this time. 87. So this for the match. Makuru car 80. 80 for Makuru Suzuki. Having already taken out 120. Gets two darts to seal the deal. Still on double seven. Still on double seven. And Makuru Suzuki, Suzuki on double seven makes it a double at the start of today's play. Two from two for Makuru, who defeats Shane McGurk 4 2. A really decent display as well, as you can see. The 160 might have turned it for Shane, but Makuru hit back with the 120 and gets the victory 4 2. <laughs>7 Cordeca back in action taking on Ricky Palmer again Ricky had opportunities in his first game but couldn't take them looking to put that one right this time around first leg quarter through first game on Decca has a darts and he will probably out of the players that have lost so far be the one that is the most disappointed I think he, he was a good performer against Alex Small and put himself in a good position, but Small put in a little spell the last couple of legs of the match, didn't he, to turn that one around? Yeah, when he went 3-2 up, he was he was looking really good, but that, that little blitz from Alex Small put pay to that. Palmer, well, he's got to sort out the doubling. Main priority, isn't it? 21 darts in that first match. Yeah, had more than enough opportunities. 100. Yeah, 
game five of 15 today. Following this will be Chris Wickenden against Alex Small. 59. And it's Makuru Suzuki, the one who's won both of her fixtures so far. She beat, she won the battle of winners between herself 100. and Shane McGurk. This is the battle of players who lost their opening encounters. And if you lose your first two, then you do start to disappear, don't you? Yeah, you then you're the chasing because you know you've hardly got room for one hundred and forty. One hundred and twenty-five. Call the car one hundred and thirty-four. Another in there, leave double sixteen. And that's an excellent, excellent error. One hundred and two. Excellent finish. But Palmer will get a Ricky dart at seventy-six. At least one. It's been a really good scoring visit from Palmer. Now, can he add it all together? Sixteen. That's unlucky. Call the car thirty-two. They are two well thrown darts. No, but it is two more missed, isn't it? And however well you throw them, it's going to stick in your head. Completely agree. Green shot on the first and leg. Sticks in the double and kind of sticks it to Ricky Palmer, who will be ruining this problem that is evident already. Second leg, Ricky to throw first. Game 21 on. 21 missed in the first match. A two in this match, despite being on the wire. Increases that tally to 23. 140. First chance looking at the obviously the Ricky Palmer throw here this week. It's quite an aggressive throw, a long pullback. One hundred and twenty. It's quite a thrust, isn't it? Yeah, that was a bit unlucky for Cor Decker. The old Robin Hood. Eighty five. I think from the opening exchanges, I think. Ricky is the player that most players will be looking at and thinking, right, that, that's a must-win match for me. No disrespect to Ricky himself. He has shown some good stuff. That's the thing, though, isn't it? When everyone else takes points off of someone, you then have the pressure to do it yourself. 125. And interestingly, it was Makuru Suzuki in Group A, but it doesn't seem to be that way in this group. Not at all. 134, Ricky O'Carr, 151. Well, this would be ironic, wouldn't it, if all of a sudden he produced a huge finish, but that's not going to happen. However, he's going to, similar to the first leg, put himself in a decent spot. 93, Carl O'Carr, 147. For a big finish in that leg before Palmer had a go. This time, Palmer will get two more darts at double. Just feel this has 96. to be clean. 96, Ricky O'Carr, 58. Yeah, for Ricky Palmer. Because his scoring's been superb. Now he's going to get two at tops. Only Green shot the on the one. second leg. Ricky Palmer. That's much better from Ricky Palmer, and he's now in this game. Yeah, that could change everything. First start at a double going Third straight quarter in. Through first. Game yeah, on. All the ones that have missed before now. And that could change the direction of the day for Ricky Palmer. And the good thing is he's done it in time as well. It's only the second leg of his second match. 97. Yeah, he's certainly a player in there. When we uh, see players on debut come through the AEC system, sometimes we don't know an awful lot about them. One hundred and twenty-five. Oh, proper poker face player is Cordeca. 140. Never know what he's thinking, how he's feeling. 99. Uh, has his maths. 96. Well, the mass was right, but just the direction of the dart just lost the weight a little bit. Didn't reach the target. Ball or 25. 55. That slip from Cordeca is home from the door here for Ricky Palmer. There's a potential break opportunity. 
152. That wasn't the intention. Corner power, 125. It should start on the bullseye. Would you have been tempted to stay there, Maverick Murph? <laughs> no, not, not in a million years. I think when players go for 49. the ball, 25. Ryukar, 21. Well, hoping to hit the 25, so they've got treble 20 tops, aren't they? It's double eight for Palmer to take the lead here. Five. Call your car 76. Yeah, nothing really wrong with the double attempts there. Just didn't go in. And how you said Core has a right poker face. Ricky certainly doesn't. And Core can't rescue this one. The, the wheels have 36. come off at the back end of Ricky this car 16. And Ricky Palmer could be the beneficiary here. Game and shot he on the third leg. Double Ricky eight. Palmer. Finds the target and leads the match. 2-1. Impressing as well. Ricky Palmer. Four flag Ricky does the first. Game and on. Already this is a vast improvement from game one. 85. I do like about the Ricky Palmer set up. Some very old school Union Jack flights. We see Steve Brown using them a lot as well. And Reminds me of darts back in the day. Yeah, they used to be the, the go-to choice, didn't they? 44. You see? I remember our friend and colleague, Chris Mason, using them at the lakeside as well. They're doing it for, doing it for Team GB. 59. Core Decker, Team Norway. Looking for... Sort of Nordic and 16. Baltic domination at the moment at the Super Series. You mentioned Anton Oslund earlier on. Well, Andreas Harrison of Sweden. He's through to finals night on Saturday. One hundred and forty. Decker's in charge of this leg. One hundred and twenty-five. Six starts from one seven seven. To break Palmer back. It's been a good response from Decker this. Because he just went off the boil. 137. Tees up tops after 12 for a potential break back. 171. Kodokar 40. Pressure applied. Oh, that is a disaster for Cordeca. He's just looking. Not only is it missed, but it's meant he's had to waste that dart to get to another go at a double. Game shot on the Good fourth leg. Cordeca. Ricky Palmer was waiting, but Cordeca managed to pull himself fifth leg, out of trouble first. Game on. Yeah. Fabulous rescue job from Cordeca, and it was needed as well because the one seven one setup from Ricky Palmer. Applied the pressure. 61. 85. So Chris Wickenden and Alex Small waiting in the wings. They'll play the last match of this second round of fixtures. Small won his first. 140. Paul Hinks, the referee for. This week here at the Super Series, never a more experienced official 60. on the stage. I, don't, I won't embarrass him by mentioning 97. his senior status, but I'll just say this, treble 17, double eight. Just don't ask Jose de Salsa that question. Yeah, officiates actually all of the, the World Seniors events as well, doesn't he, Paul Hinks? Does a stellar job. Yeah, one of the... 133. the sports had. Right, someone's supposed to at 180 now, so we get the Paul Hinks call. They haven't read the script, these players. 55. Call your car, well, 70. Just to be the game shot call. 
20 to leave double 16. Just pulled it low. 52. Right, go on, Ricky. Last chance. Not going to happen. We haven't had one in this match yet. Eight one forties between them. One hundred. Cordial car eighteen. Double nine to lead again for Cordeca. That looks a great guide. Surely. No score. Ricky O'Car one hundred and twenty one. Can Ricky pick the pocket? Double seventeen leaves a bullseye. Not in. 57. Cordial car 18. Second time of asking for Cordeca. Game shot on the fifth leg. This Cordeca. Finds the target. Decker leads 3 2. Six leg Riggy to third first. Game on. One hundred. One hundred and forty. Ricky Palmer needs to find another one hundred. Doesn't back to back tons may not be enough. In this leg, because Cordeca is going through the gears here. 135. Two, two treble visits at the start of this leg. Ninety-seven. One hundred. Oh, Decker closing in. Ninety-five. Call the car. One hundred and twenty-six. Wayward. So Palmer's going to get a chance to send us the distance. Thirty-one. Ricky O'Car. One hundred and nine. Yeah, and Decker hasn't even left it that handy if Palmer does miss this. And he will get a go at a double. Double of his choice. Chooses tops. Pins Game tops. shot on the sixth Palmer. leg. Ricky Palmer. Produces a checkout. Restores parity. Decker has the darts in the decider. Seventh and final leg corded through first. Game on. 1 leg shootout for 2 points here in group C 59 70 big last start there because Ricky Palmer was stuttering 100 Tense moments here, Chris. Huge game for both. Yeah, certainly having lost their 45. fixtures, losing the first two means you're going to have to go on a real run to trouble the top two in this group. Get the sense that it's a bigger leg for Ricky than it is for Corey. He can keep calm and carry 100. on. And knows all about what it's like. Here at the Super Series, I think Ricky Palmer could be deflated if he, he loses a close match. Here. 95. Yeah, he's given everything, but it may not be enough. 93. You feel this has to be big. A ton's not enough. Needs another... 81. Cordy car 149. Bit of a disaster for Ricky Palmer as Cordeca to win it in style. Going to get a dart at double 16. Ooh, 133. Close, no well, all Ricky Palmer can now do is hit and hope. 
Sixteen. Yeah, having already missed Cordial the dart to wrap this up. That's three more. I need to step a long way over here. But he's found a way. Game shot in the match. In the bottom Decker. Corner, and Decker does it in a decider. He wins 4-3. His first win of the group. Coming next, Chris Wickenden against Alex Small. This is the Lotus Super Series. One hundred and eighty. Welcome back, everyone, for match number six here of 15 in this Group C session. Alex Small against Chris Wickenden. Alex Small looking to join Makuru Suzuki. First leg, Chris the the table. first. Game on. But he's going to have to find something special because it is Pugs who has the darts. And straight in for Treble. 140. Sixty. Looks more will race through every dart as he always does, and it worked for him towards the end of his match with Cordeca. Turned it around with a little blitz in the last couple of legs. Forty five. For Chris Wickend and he had the opposite. He was tuned up and sitting pretty against Shane McGurk, but ended up losing four two. One hundred and forty. An intriguing little contest, this one. So even though that darts found the treble 25. 20. 85. It's in the wrong part of the bed. 118. We should see if we can sort out a, a game here for sport relief. Alex Moore against Ricky Evans. <laughs> 64. He's up there, isn't he? He's certainly, uh, Ricky Evans has slowed down a little bit now as well, so more certainly going to be right up there. 134. Chris Yokar, 167. I actually think Jermaine Watermaina is probably the fastest. Yeah, Keen Barry's in that mix as well. 97. Alec Yokar, 49. Well, let's see how quickly and how clinically Alex Small can take this out. 17. Well, the answer is quick, but not 70. clinical, so Wickenden gets a go at 70. 17. For an early hold. Game shot of the first there. Wickenden. Chris Wickenden. Takes out the 70 to hold. Second leg, I like to throw first. Game on. He wins the first leg, just as he did in his previous match on the first two 43 another speedster that we have here 
Mr. Danny Larby Jr. 60. Ninety-four. There's a few players you could put in that bracket. That'll uh, be yellow class and quick, isn't it? Moreno Blom, Scott Baker we mentioned. One hundred. But it isn't always what happens with a lot of these 16. fast players and people like us talk about them being fast is they kinda of play on it and they sometimes end up thinking more about the speed than the accuracy. Completely agree. 58. Kind of just focusing on the importance and the fundamentals. 100. Well, there'll be occasions. There are players where you see if, if they're not gripping the dart right, they'll still throw it because they're just used to that rhythm, that quick rhythm where a more measured, methodical type player would make 60. sure everything was correct before the dart was released. That's why they're often... First start, merch. 140. Absolutely. 180. Beautiful. And it gets him right 64. back in the mix in this second leg. 28. Christian McCarr, 43. So the 180 has transformed this leg. Now it's going to be two at double 16. Game shot on the second leg. Only Chris needs the one. It's a breaker throw for Wickenden. And that 180. Third leg, Chris, to throw first. Saw the angle Game go on. in there. It was a perfect one for him. 99. 56. So a two-leg lead for Wickenden. He's been here before. Won the first two against Shane McGurk earlier today. But this time he has the darts in leg three. 45. 100. 60. 60. Strayed the wrong side of the wire there. Need to try. 95. Finds one. He has the, the wicked and throw under a little bit of pressure here. 82. That could be a big last start. Yeah, Small is searching here. Really searching. 75. Didn't make too much sense to go for the bullseye. 59. Does leave a finish, but Small will be hoping to be on something a lot smaller. 60. Chris Yorka, 156. Probably smaller than that. And Wickenden now looking at 156. Took this out earlier in the week against Kevin Painter. But won't be doing it here. 46. Alec Carl 115. 115. Well, he was starting, I assume, there on the bullseye. 25 would have left him 37. On. Chris Rocard, 110. Hitting the 12, he, he couldn't leave, he couldn't finish with two darts left. Yeah, some questionable board management. That's very good board management because he had a perfect 80. start. I like your car, 78. Thought I might as well get a go at some double. Completely agree. Well, again, this is almost nonsense from Alex Small. Double eleven remaining. And he misses it. Sixty seven. I just don't get Visual it. Visual car thirty. Don't understand it. But it's forty two, isn't it, to leave thirty six, but it's a silly shot. Because it's fourteen ball or you end up on double eleven. It, yeah, again. Just 
Alex Small is the architect of his own downfall if he does lose this leg. 24. He may still Have win the leg. 11. Game shot on the third leg. Alex Small. Yeah, and he's got he's gotten away with it, but fourth leg we'll Alex Dutroux first and, and question the choices there that Game on. I fully appreciate and understand that players have favourite doubles. But sometimes you have 60. to be adaptable. Well, at least 26. he didn't shy away from going for the treble 20. Then I see so many players hit two treble ones and then they, they switch downstairs. 140. Fill it up. Chris Wickham then backed himself not to do it. Unless your camera men's on the Euro Tour that seem to enjoy it. 41. But I was just seeing what we saw in the previous match. Wickenden had a two-leg lead and now he's starting to stutter. 60. I think we are. And he knows he had a chance to have a three-leg lead as well. That'll be a good dart for him just to sit on top of there. 100. Just managed to find a treble in the end. 140. 97. Alec Carl won the treble last start. However, Small was in complete control of this leg. 81. 45 leaves 36. 65. Well, that's what he keeps trying to leave. He's had little success in doing so, so far in the game, but he's left it this time. 43. Alec Carl 36. Double 18. The square at this match at 2 2. Being shot on the fourth leg. Alex Small. It is all square. And Chris Wickenden is starting to develop a pattern here. He likes patterns. But Fifth he won't leg, like Chris the first. Game on. Leading 2 0 and pegged back to 2 2 for the second time in as many matches today. Yeah, it is a, it is a concern, Murph. 41. One hundred. That's a perfect dart for him. Not used. One hundred and forty. Well, dart two, but dart three finds the target. One hundred and forty. Again, Alex Small warming up now. Sixty. One hundred. Well, small first to a finish on the wicked and throw. One hundred. Ali one hundred and sixty one. Only one point better off, despite being three darts more into the leg. 125. Again, 160. Needs another. Just underneath. 100. Alec so Carr, 36. Three legs on the spin. Alex Small looking at double 18. Over adjusted. 27. And then comes inside. Crystal Carr, 60. Double ten. Fifty. Alec Yukar nine. Make sure the big one here does that. Double four. Game shot Finds on the fifth the leg. Alex Don't apologise, Alec. Don't apologise. You hit it. Six Same leg Alec to throw first. Game Alex on. Small has come back from 2-0 behind Chris Wickenden to lead 3-2. Exactly 81. how Shane McGurk did.
81. Another. Puts him in control. 100. Still the favourite because he has the darts. And this is a disaster. 22. For Wickenden in this leg. It's all about small. 94. Closing in. Ninety six. One hundred and thirty four. Super visit from Alex Small leaves ninety two after twelve. One hundred and thirty two. Well, I'll be here 92. and now. Double sixteen. Sixty. Christian McCarr, one hundred and seventy. One seventy for Wickenden. Outside chance, not gonna go. So small coming back. Ninety eight for more Ali match McCarr, starts. 32. Double sixteen to win it. Can he use it? Game yes, shot he can. Match. Alex Small. Alex Small wins four legs on the spin to complete the comeback against Chris Wicked. And coming up after the break, Makuro Suzuki against Kordaka. Good afternoon and welcome to the Motor Super Series here on Sporty Stuff TV, where Group C has begun here at the Live Lounge in Portsmouth. We've played six matches so far, two rounds of fixtures. This is what's happened up to press. It's been really, really good starts as far as Makuru Suzuki and Alex Small are concerned. Both players having won their opening two fixtures. Alex Small getting the better of Chris Wickenden just before we came live to Wickenden, who'd been tuning up in both his matches, but has lost them by four legs to two. This is how the table occupies itself after two rounds of fixtures. Suzuki and Small both at the top of the pile, having both picked up two victories from two. Suzuki, who had actually finished bottom of Group A, getting off to the perfect start as far as Group C is concerned. Cordeca and Shane McGurk, one victory and one defeat to their name, whilst Ricky Palmer and Chris Wickenden are both waiting to get their first victories of the group. Well, this is one of two sessions we're going to be broadcasting live to you this afternoon on Sporty Stuff TV. We're going to be live from 10 o'clock this evening for the beginning of Group B action. And what a cast this we have got for you for that here at the Live Lounge in Portsmouth. Right. Our first game of the afternoon sees Cordeca in action up against Bakua Suzuki. We'll be watching the action in the company of Chris Murphy and Phil Bars in the commentary box. Phil, we can have a chat to now. Now, Phil, you've been around the block. You've been watching a lot of the women's series action this year. You've seen a lot of Bakua Suzuki in action. Were you surprised by a level of play in the first three days? And have you been pleasantly surprised by what you've seen this afternoon? Uh, yeah, I was surprised that she maybe didn't hit the heights that we'd seen from her in those first couple of days, but she gradually got better and better. Wednesday, I thought, was her best day. But then today, she's just taken that form to what we know she can produce. And it's no surprise to me that she sits top. Um, I thought those odds were very generous at the start of play. So, look, she's a two-time world champion for a reason. And she's second on that order of merit on the Women's Series, looking likely to go to Ali Pali and the Grand Slam. So, look, she's a class act. 
Well, it'd be interesting to see how she gets on. She takes on Cordeca in the opening game of the afternoon session here on Sporty Stuff TV. Phil is going to stay in the commentary box and is going to be joined by Chris Murphy to describe all the afternoon's action. And here we go. Match number seven of this Group C campaign on Thursday afternoon. Makuru Suzuki looking to make it three wins from three. Cordeca looking to join her on four points. So big game this in the context of this early Group C. saying Chris big game for both Makuru can go three from three but Cordeca could join her with a win on four points yeah Makuru with those victories against Ricky Palmer and Shane McGurk before the break both of them 4-2 Cordeca lost out to Alex Small but the big man got the better of Ricky Palmer interestingly both his games went to last leg decider so I know that first leg Makuru to throw first Matthew Came on. Edgar and you sort of backed him Saying that Cordeca could be a player that emerges as the main man this week. However, he hasn't been convincing today. No, we've seen some, some good bits, but we've also seen some 43. inconsistent bits as well from him. Ninety six. Cordeca is going to have to find a break of throw to win this game. It is Makuru who has the darts. 125. 43. Fourth meeting of the week, of course between the pair of them. When they played yesterday, Cordeca won 4-3. Won 4-0 four four on Tuesday. And also won with a whitewash win on Monday. So, Suzuki has got closer to court in the most recent meeting, and she's playing better than court today. McCurry looking for 719s to leave the 170. Not going to happen. 82. And that treble was huge because two treble dust visits in a row could have caused issues. But 96. A mistake from Cordeca. Leaving 166. I think it's quite a common fault in darts players actually knowing where to start on a shot, but then 100. not knowing what to do after that. They see a score like 262, like score did uh, score. Core did there. 97. The Kuru 121. They know start on 18, so they just don't know what else to do from that point. Yeah, it's when dart two doesn't hit the 54, it's like, where do I go? The one two one isn't going to go for Makuru. So Cordeca. 42. Should. Cordeca 69. Get at least one dart to break the throw. May get two. 18 for double 16. That's only just in. 37. Makuru, your class 79. Makuru could go anywhere here. She could even go for a treble 17. Well, she goes treble 19. She went treble 17 earlier this week. He's gone the right way this time, but that's not the right segment. 27. Koduka, 32. She's made a mess of that. Should have gone treble 17, Phil. <laughs> yeah, treble 13. I've seen her go in the past on that shot. Kordek has found that difficult. I'm not sure how easy double eight will be either. 16. Well, however easy or Makura difficult Yoka, it might have been, 52. he hasn't found it. And Makura Suzuki will get a couple of darts at double, assuming she hits a big number. 
Yeah, he's throwing down at those targets. She hasn't had a big number, but another one in there, Makuru, and you've got the ball. So tops. 32. And she's cost herself. Cordial car, 16. Few darts double there. That's a bit of a mess towards the end of that leg. Yeah, missing too many big numbers right now. And is she going to pay the price? Game shot on the first the leg. Cordeca. Is yes, Cordeca breaks. But when you break in 23 darts, the person whose darts it was Second will be Second leg, Cordeca first. Game on. Yeah, he was struggling to cross the line as well there, so... 100. Suzuki will be ruining the way that leg ended. Broken in the opener. 100. Ninety-eight. This is probably up there in terms of difference of height in the game. We see some little and large before, but this is probably 45. the top and the bottom end of the scale. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. His remaining fixtures today 61. will be against... Jay McGurk and Chris Wickenden. Makuru still has Wickenden and Alex Small to play. That's a perfect first start for her. Oh, look at that. Well, they were well great. 180. Sorry, 140. Makuru Suzuki just uh, correcting Paul Hinks. Good showing there from Makuru. Sporting behaviour just to correct the referee. 46. Big fan of that. <laughs> they were well grouped, weren't they, though? It's like Gary Anderson-esque grouping, that. 45. That one's a bit of an unlucky one because it did deflect off the flight. Ninety-six. It is one of the problems now. This with players that use these really sort of durable, plasticky flights that they'll collide against them, and the dart will divert dramatically. Yeah, something I've spoken about a lot when 97. we do our Call streams on a, on a Monday, and I'll touch on my theory in a second. But let's see if Cordeca can seal a two-nil lead. Eighty. McCurry will cast 74. Treble 14. Again, she misses a big number on her finish, so she should go 15 bull here. May go 25. She does go 25. The tops. Well, it's Game shot on the second leg. Makuru Suzuki. Suzuki. That was a gamble, but it paid off. Very, very brave from Makuru Suzuki. Third leg, Makuru to throw first. Game However, on. sometimes... Fortune favours the brave. It did on that occasion. But yeah, going back to these, like the, the moulded flight, we see more and more players going and moving over to them. And although, yes, they're more durable, and they keep their shape better, we see that the deflections where if you're using a type of flight as core is there, your standard one, that even if you hit it, the dart's still going to end up in the board. 100. It might not be the intended target, but you're still going to get something. But where there is absolutely no give in the moulded ones, they just end up on the floor. And looking at Dave Chisnell's game over the last 18 months, that One the sensational 180 and a great angle of it there. But he loves these moulded flights, but he's also had more darts on the floor than I can ever remember because of the way he throws and he gets a lot clattering into each 58. other. 58. It, it's a double-edged sword. It's like, yes, he likes them, but is it good for his game? Yeah, fair point. And even when they don't end up on the floor, they divert that dramatically that you're often missing the segment that you're aiming at, and it's landing at 105. 
the pros and cons, I'm sure. Suzuki having a really good leg here. 200 with a 180 sandwiched in between to leave one, two, 125. One. Makuru Car 121. Ninety-six. Again, stray. And it's always at that point when 45. she needs a treble to leave a double. It's happened three legs on the spin. So I can guarantee I can give you my personal guarantee that Makura Suzuki is gonna hit a one with the next dart. You heard it, ladies and gentlemen. Murph has personally guaranteed. Forty one. Makura Lukar seventy six. Straight in the treble twenty, obviously. Seven seventy six and two <laughs> darts. Well, not far away. But she does get the segment she wants, and now she's got the double 58. she wants, but can't quite find it. Double 18 seems to be in fashion again, because everyone's trying to leave it. But in this group, it certainly is, isn't it? Wouldn't want to have a look at the double 18 the in the practice 18. room. There would be no red left. Double 9. Game shot on the, the third leg. Mikuru Suzuki. Mikuru Suzuki once again has shown some darting defiance here. A blow Four in the opening leg, but she's bounced back Game superbly. Ninety-three. Yeah, group C leader is showing some real steel to her game right now. And that's perfectly pitched once again. 140. 140. Just feel that. 140. If Makuru can get to eight points overnight, then she's in a fabulous position to attack tomorrow. I think it could be a group where 12 points gets you through. 140. 140. Decker now needs to go back to the 20s. He does this time. 58. It's a break opportunity here for Makuru. Oh, yeah. More than a break opportunity now. 100. She left that 1-2-1 one, one again. She could have chosen to, to go the ball with a last start there and just left this finish slightly better place. You took the words right out of my mouth. I thought she might have gone for the ball with 100. the last start. Makuro Kao, 121. Probably much of a muchness because she probably will use it now. Well, there's that big one. Predicted at the wrong time, Phil. But it's still 81. left. Perfectly on a double and forcing Decker to take out a ton topper. Doesn't go, so Makuru is going to get three darts at tops. Makuru car 40. For a 3 1 lead and daylight in this contest. Game shot on the fourth leg. Makuru Suzuki. Right in the middle of the tops. Makuru Suzuki. Fifth leg, Makuru to throw first. Game on. He's one leg away. I'm going three from three. And how much of a a game changer for her? And it might seem silly to say this because it was match number one. But one hundred match with Ricky Palmer. Remember, in Group A, Makuru Suzuki only won two matches. She's on for three on the spin in Group C. She missed 16, 16 darts at double in the opener. In this match, he's 50%. Cordeca needing something big, hitting something big. Makuru Suzuki. 140. Responding well. 60. Go back to the, the last time Makuri was on for a couple of TV events in a row in the PDC. She missed, was it one or two darts to beat Gezi in 26. the Grand Slam? Yeah, lost 5-4, yeah. And then she had James Richardson hopping at Ali Pali as well. Yeah, she could have been the first before Fallon. 
Same tournament. Game before, wasn't it? Yeah, she was waiting on a double, wasn't Boost she? Yourself. She didn't yeah. ever go at it, but she was waiting on a double when he went out. She is threatening here for a hat trick of victories. That puts her 45. Well on top in this group. Only Alex Small has managed to win all of his matches so far as well. And he takes on Sean McGurk next. Shane McGurk next. 125. A difficult task for Alec. No, 79 is not easy. McCurry, as I say, would have wanted to apply maximum 75. pressure, but that dart into the five 79. makes it difficult. Double 10. He's done that a few times this week, Cordeca. 59. And it's not intentional. Makuru Car 115. 115 for Makuru Suzuki. Plenty of options on this type of finish. 90 left. Well, she went for the ball. Showboating from Makuru. 91. Well, she's left it handy just in Kodokar case Cordeca doesn't hit double 10. But he does. Game shot of so the, the fifth layer. Cordeca. Six leg quarter through the first. Game on. Loving McCurry's confidence going for the ball on 90. Yeah, two in hand. I mean, it's it's legitimate, but treble, any treble really, treble 20, treble 18, if you think your opponent's going to finish. I, I, I'm an advocate of, if your opponent's on a double, you've got two darts left. 100. And you're on that kind of finish. You might as well just go for treble 20. It's the thing you throw out all day. Doesn't Completely agree. It doesn't really matter what double you leave. Yeah, I didn't mind it that time around because she had the guide of the first start that was in 99. the 25. So Peter Manley, of course, do that in reverse before, didn't we, on 90? Go for tops to leave the ball at yeah. the end of a nine dart attempt. Could you imagine if he'd have hit it, we'd never hear the end of it. 68. Well, that's a perfectly placed dart for Cordeca. 140. And he's on course to force a deciding leg in this match. He's been close in this group every single match, 4-2 or 4-3 so far. 140. Having trouble trying to get past that one, so you can see him stepping across. He's been quite good at that this week. Ninety-five. He has stepped up and he's found the target. Yeah, just open, open up the angle really well. Well, the one forty here, or the equivalent, makes it interesting. Not going to happen. One hundred. Cordial car one hundred and eight. In the balance, Deck is only going to get a maximum of one dart double, and now he has ninety. He's going to go the 18 route. So Makuru Suzuki, 93 for the match. 52. Do you go the ball Makuru route? Makuru 93. Or do you go aggressive, treble 19? I think she'll go the ball. She's gone aggressive. <laughs> Double 18, it's worked. She's got two darts. Game shot and the match. Only Makuru needs Suzuki. One. And Makuru Suzuki has made it a hat trick of wins in Group C. She only won two matches across three days in Group A. She's three out of three today and flying high at the top of the table. Looking to join her next, Alex Small. He takes on Shane McGurk. Hey, I'm Gary Ashburn, and I've been working in the world of collecting with the memorabilia for over 30 years. I'd love you to join me every Sunday night at 10 p.m. for Collectibles Guru, where we showcase awesome items from the world of sport, music, TV, and film. You'll hear the stories behind the genuine signatures and get a front row seat into the world of sport and showbiz. So tune in every Sunday night at 10 p.m. only here on Sporty Stuff TV.
Welcome back to the action. Paul Hinks getting ready to referee another of our 15 fixtures today at the Moda Super Series and getting ready to play in the match. That man, Shane McGurk, who has won one and lost one of his opening encounters. Alex Small, though, has won each of his first two. Victory against Cordeca 4-3. Victory against Chris Wickenden 4-2. And is looking to go level with Makuru Suzuki at the top of the table. She is six points from a possible six. McGurk, a winner on the development tour. Lost out to Makuru Suzuki, but beat Chris Wickenden earlier on. Alex Small, champion of champions. Champion. First leg, Shane to through first. Game on. And looking to join Suzuki in remaining unbeaten at the start of the day. I'm Chris Murphy. Phil Bars alongside me. Thank you, Chris. Yeah, I'm just looking as well. That this is, for me, this is no, quite a big think. game for the balance of the table because if Alex Small wins it, he jumps to six points with Makuru Suzuki. 140. And then all of a sudden, there's a four-point gap to the rest of the field. Yeah, it does. Kind of blow away the theory that we thought it would be 140. really, really close. But the players at the top, well, at least one of them, isn't one of the ones we expected to be at the top. Alex Small, I thought might be, but I think this is the game. It's a really crucial game because Shane McGurk's another one who should be a top two contender. 57. And if that gap does open up, it gets difficult. The last match of the day, by the way, the day is Makuru Suzuki against Alex Small. Imagine both of them 88. having won three or four matches by that point. That could pretty much be a qualification match on day one. Completely agree, Chris, that all of a sudden, that this Group C, the way the first seven matches have gone, 60. there's now an interesting Alex dynamic. Alex 93. Shane Rukar, 148. Well, small on 60 when he comes back. 100. Alex Rukar, 60. to try and stay away from tops. And that won't be the easiest dart to navigate. So it's double 10. Take the opening leg. Game shot on the first leg. Alex it Small. Is a break of throw. Time for Shane McGurk perhaps to start to worry a little bit. Second leg, Alex, to throw first. Game on. Yeah, 15 dart break of throw for Alex Small. 100. The way Alex plays, he just grows in confidence and... Because he is so quick, when he is flowing, it's going to be hard to beat. 60. Yeah, he's, he has peaks and troughs, doesn't he? But he's peaks and troughs at the right time so far today. Certainly in that first match when he beat Cordeca 4 3. Yeah, for large parts of that game, Cor was the better player. 97. But, as you say, those, those little bits of magic that he, Alex finds, he found them at the right moment. One of the eighty. And that is a good moment as well for Alex Small. Two one eighty is already in this match. He's produced fifty-seven. A very, very good performance. The first leg was one in fifteen darts. Could go treble sixteen. May go double double. Decided to go for a, a block 16. target, but there is method in the madness there because he loves double eighteen. So he thought, you know what? Might as well just hit a couple of single 20s and go for that. Just leave my favourite. 96. Alucard, 36. Game shot on the second leg. Alex Small. That's why. In the blink of an eye, he's tuning that up. Legs of 15 and 13. Equates to an average of 107 and a 2 0 lead. On. Yeah, really, really good stuff from Alex Small. And Shane McGurk's going to need many more darts in there. 99. If he's going to threaten Alec. In this match. 55. It shows how quickly one visit can change an average in this short format. 60. A treble has turned and it was five points off. 96. Not to keep it pretty much where it is, but... 350 left. Paul Nicholson will be excited. Nice. Yes, loves this score, doesn't he? 
Yeah, he says it's the hardest thing to do in darts. 29. I've never played at the level Paul has, so who am I to disagree? Well, I, say, I think hitting the bullseye from the balcony would be harder, but... 57. I think he may, means in an actual standard match situation. Is that a feature we can put together? 121. Why not? Balcony bullseyes. I hope Henry's not got any darts up there, because... There's a match going on now, Henry. Just hold your horses, mate. 59. Well, he didn't manage to get himself down to the big fish, but Shane McGurk has left the little fish. 140. And he might Shane have to McGurk hit it. 130. This is all on the first dart. Now that's awkward. What a dart that is. The bullseye. Game shot on the third leg. sensational Shane from Shane McGurk. Start one made it difficult. Fanned away past the blocker. To throw the blocker game on. And then bangs the bullseye back in this one. Yeah, respected by Small as well. Good 81. sportsmanship there between the pair of them. Ricky Palmer, Chris Wickenden coming up after this. 140. Neither player has any points from their opening two matches and... We'll talk about that more during the 100. game, but you would start to get the sense that defeat would be potentially fatal for the loser of that one. The way it's looking, I agree. 140. All of a sudden, this is brewing into a good contest. Shane McGurk has put nearly 10 points on his average in the last two legs, and he's making a fight of this now. One hundred and forty. Eighty-one after nine on the small darts. One hundred. Yeah, Show your count. Eighty-one. Small like spell. Twelve segment. Oh, he's missed a big number and allowed Alex Small 41. the opportunity. All he needed was a single twelve for a go at the ball, a target he just hit to win the previous leg. Now Small needs a single 20 to get a dart at the double. I'm not sure how much he can see of this. 85. Shane That's probably 40. why he's almost tried to bend the dart in. He's almost trying to create an angle that's not there. Game shot on the fourth leg. Shane McGurk. And a clear sight for Shane. He's in level the match. And this, this trend comes carries on today. Like Shane did first. They haven't had a Game single on. match where a player has lost by more than two legs. 4-2, 4-2, 4-3, 4-2, and then two more 4-2s, and this one will be... 100. And Small needs to find... 100. One of those turbo charges that he's capable of, because Shane McGurk has grown into this game. 125. One hundred. Well, oh, this is good. This is good. One hundred and forty. One hundred. Shane McCall, one hundred and thirty-six. Completely revitalised McGurk here in this one. And he's at it again. Double eight. 120. Almost added a 136 to the 130, but we'll be back for the remainder. 135. Shane, your car 16. And McGurk looking at double eight for three on the spin. He thought it was in. He wobbled. And he just kiss off the barrel. No it's score. On the wrong side. 66. Such a good spell from Shane McGurk, but it ends with four missed starts at double. And Alex Small gets a go at his favourite double. 48. Fails to find Shane McGurk, 16. His reaction there says to me he thought he'd gone into the, the treble there. It was that close. Yeah, because he knew what he was trying to leave, didn't he? So it must have been he thought that he'd missed. Shane McGurk's problem is he keeps missing. Keeps missing double eights. 
Oh, look at that. No well, score. I think we saw a combination of a couple of things there. The fact that he had to step across and open up the angle, but also what we were talking about earlier, those rigid flights, those really thick plastic fl flights that maybe Six. just took the momentum out of the General dark. General car, 16. Case in point, Chris. Surely this time McGurk doesn't pass it up for a third time. Still having to adjust. He's still having to move. He might be relieved to throw at a different target here. And it he goes straight in. Shane McGurk, Shane McGurk gets in front. Should have been about three visits before. But all's well that ends well for McGurk. Six leg Alex to throw first. Game on. No lead 3-2. Yeah. I completely agree with your point there as well. About I think he was relieved about throwing at a different target, 100. having missed so many at one. We had a shot before that, of course. Nice really rare small splitting second dart on the 18. I don't mind it if they think it's 60. blocked. Sixty. We see it quite a lot on, on lower doubles where a player, for example, on the double nineteen, they'll block it with the first dart and then because they've got 85. two darts left, they'll persevere. Surely he fills it up from there. One hundred and forty. One hundred. That's small. A wild card from Wales. Looking to level up here with a 156 checkout. 65. Alucard 156. Is he the wild card or is he the Welsh wild card though? 60. Shane Rukar 140. On his scorecard today, he's got two victories. Is that going to change? Is he going to have a loss on it? 50. I'll let your car 96. May have to take this out to avoid that. And he gets two at double 18. 78. But McGurk has an opportunity now for the match. Should start 20s is the sensible play. Two at double 15 to win it. Can he find it last start in hand? 75. Over adjust and too much start to come. And they have gone for Shane McGurk. Double four then, a small to force a decider. Ten. Can't do it. McGurk Shane gets another 15. go. She's chosen MO. Seven for double four. And Game this time, time Shane, Shane McGurk, McGurk does win it. And that is a huge result in the context of Group C because it stops Alex Small getting away from him. A 4-2 win for the Irishman, averaging 83.85. High finish of 130, but coming up after the break, battle at the bottom between Ricky Palmer and Chris Wickenden. Catch the best thoroughbred racing from South Africa alongside 15 live greyhound races at 11 o'clock every Tuesday, Thursday and Friday morning, live here on Sporty Stuff TV.
The action continues here at the Moda Super Series. The meeting between two players who are yet to pick up any points. Chris Wickenden, bottom of the table, alongside fellow cellar dweller, right, Ricky Palmer. Knew it was going to do it at some point. Ryan Palmer plays tonight, his brother. But it's Ricky that is struggling for wins so far. Went down. 4-2 did the 38-year-old Bristolian to Makuru Suzuki in his first match and then was beaten 4-3 by Cordeca, whereas Nuneaton's Wickenden lost 4-2 to Shane McGurk and to Alex Small by the same scoreline. First leg, Ricky, the third first. As we go into this game, I think game I'd on. rather be Ricky Palmer than Chris Wickenden right now because I actually thought that Ricky played really well in his last game. But there's a common theme here 100. with Wickenden that he goes 2 nil up and almost, I don't know, runs out of steam or, or switches off or, or something because he can't see out games. 100. Yeah, exactly the same pattern has happened in both of his first two matches. Taking a 2 nil lead and then ended up losing the match. 45. By losing four straight legs. You're saying football 2 nils a dangerous lead. I didn't ever think it would be a dangerous lead in a first of four darts match, but it seems to be the case for Chris. It's a new trend here on Thursday afternoon at the Super Series. One hundred and twenty-five. Should start downstairs in seven nineteens. Leave the big fish. Needs another trouble. 95. Can't find one. 81. Well, it might be advised here to... I mean, would never endorse it, but let Ricky win the first leg, and then he might win the match. 100. Ricky O'Carl, 150. Is he going to go the Whitlock way, Chris? Doubt it. We'll see it at some point at the Super Series. I think there's a time and a place, isn't 60. there, when you're already through Pushing or already out. One, what is it, eight? More likely for someone to go for three bullseyes. Or if you're littler at any time. Or Steve West as well. He likes the, the bullseye route. 41. Well, Ricky O'Connor, 90. For Palmer to take the first leg. Single leaves bull, treble leaves double five. And that's nice Game from Ricky Palmer. Leg, so, Ricky Palmer. A different situation for Wiki against Ricky. Second leg, Chris Chris himself first. Game on. One nil behind, having found himself two nil up in all of his previous matches, but he's lost them both. And, and a nice crisp 90 finish there from Ricky. 100. The doubling's been the Achilles heel so far. 56. For Decker, Shane McGurk next. Decker. One out of forty. Got win against Palmer, but just looked out of sorts a little bit in his last match against Makuru Suzuki. Yeah, I thought his first, first couple he looked, he looked looked decent, but just seemed to. Be lacking something against McCurry. 100. I know as we are over halfway through this series now in series five. 43. You're looking Chris forward to the return of Luke Littler trying to make it a hat-trick of titles. Yeah, we are waiting for the... Return of Luke Littler, and that will be a, a nice little ambition for him. Of course, we know that he's got a card next year, and I think it, he's already got a legacy here at the Super Series, the first two. Win it twice, but if you win it three times. 140. Chris Hill Carr, 24. And then he'll be back in about 50 years, Phil. Try and do it all again. Double six, so for Wickenden here. Game shot on the second line. Chris Wickenden. It caught me out of the question, actually. I thought you were going to ask me if out of the first six qualifiers I had like Ricky to throw first. Game on. to win Champions Week. So I'm going to throw that one at you. 
from the qualifiers so far, who do you think the most likely is? 95. It's a tough one because we've seen some unexpected qualifiers. We've seen some, some really, really good darts as well. 85. I'm not going to say he's going to win it, but I was really impressed with Anton Uslan. Just his composure. I thought the throw looked absolute silk. 82. And I'm interested to see how far he can develop as a player. Because when I'm looking, I always look at the fundamentals and the best players ever. Their throw stands the test of time. 58. And, and I look at the Usland throw, and I don't think there's anything that could go wrong with it. So I'm looking forward to seeing him come back and if he can progress. Obviously, he's gotten to a Euro Tour as well. So he's one I'm excited to see develop. But I know we don't know and we can't look into the future. I don't think the winner of this series has played yet. Interesting. Pilgrim for me, Daryl Pilgrim has been... He was so good on that on that week when he qualified. I think we haven't seen a week like it, apart from Luke Nittler, who 83. is a two-time champion. And I think that he played at a similar standard. So for me, just based purely on the statistics, the levels of performance, uh, I would have to go with him. Oh, in terms of statistics, I completely agree that that week Daryl was just unplayable. 76. And again, I think this may be the last time we see him here at the Super Series for for a while because I fully expect him to go on and do really good things at Q School. Yeah, it's about the darting development conveyor belt. 57. Some heading the Pastures New and the PDC Pro Tour. Others maybe returning to the Super Series or players that haven't appeared at the Super Series before. But Ricky Carl, 126. It's always interesting, exciting, that turn of the year, which new players we're going to get. 46. Chris Carl, 129. Starting on the 19s. 19. And now treble 20 for the bullseye. Can't do it, so Palmer can get back ahead. 57. Ricky Ocar, 80. Should get at least one dart. Keep them straight. 20 for tops. It's going to be one dart at tops. What a dart that is. Game shot on the third leg. And that Ricky reaction, Chris says to me, he's thrown that blind. He's just gone over the top and Ball he's just trying to place to it first. in that general area because he didn't know if it was in or not. Yeah, and I think the position of the, the two darts actually helped with that because they were pretty much equidistant from the treble and the double. So he knew one out of them how much he had to adjust the weight of the throw. Completely agree. He knows that if I keep it straight on this angle, I've just got to pitch it over the top and, it, and it's, it's going to be there or thereabouts. 43. He's halfway there then in this match, Ricky Palmer, to his first victory. Sixty. It's interesting the start to this game because Palmer does have the two one advantage, but he's trailing on the averages by one hundred a lot of points. It is, but the key stat is he's two from two on the outer ring. Yeah, doubles win matches. I think Bobby George said something. One of them. I was about to ask. Oh, someone said something about that in the back in the day. Well, one eighties for show, and there was one for Chris Wickenden, but it's doubles for Doe. One hundred. Chris Yukar, one hundred and twenty-one. He do the bit at the end of the leg. He's got plenty of time. Double eighteen. Game oh, shot nice the finish from Chris, Chris Wickenden. Wickenden. Nice spell. 301 in six darts. The Pugs squares it up at 2 2. 25 Ricky to throw yeah. first. Game one. 12 dart holder throw. And that's probably been the best bit we've seen from Chris Wickenden so far today. One the 180 and the 121 out. One out of them, 40. One hundred and forty. 
Do get involved on social media at MSS Darts. Let us know who you think out of those 16. first qualifiers are the most likely to win Champions Week, or if you think anyone else might come in. And when it were getting towards that time of the week where we'll announce 85. next week's players, so stay tuned to the action for that and our social media channels. Yeah, every week. 47. We give a car 142. And been some real, real good debutants recently that I've enjoyed seeing for the first time. Yeah, always plenty of new faces and familiar ones at the Super Series. 29. And Ricky Palmer is a brand new one. And then come through the ADC system. And there'll be many more stories of players that have. 94. Ricky Carl won Wooden 13. And this will be a very professional finish by Palmer. Double top to complete it. 73. Just over the Richard top. Ricky Carl won Wooden 60. Wicked and looking at 160. For a break. It's not going to go. So Palmer will return. 96, Ricky O'Carr, 40. A 3 2 lead. Game shot on the fifth leg, Ricky Palmer. From Ricky Palmer, he's in front again, despite a huge gap in the averages. Six leg, Christopher first, them. game on. And it is the finishing from the Bristolian that's doing the damage. And to be fair, they've only missed a couple of darts, a double between them. 58. All about timing this game. And Palmer has been on point with that. Knows he 85. just has to win his own legs. When he throws first, that's all he has to do to pick up his first points. Doesn't have to worry about things like what this from Chris Wickenden when Pugs is throwing first. I know you you see you comment out on the protocol as well, Chris, but how often do we see James Wade do it? I think he's the master of it that doesn't care about throwing on his opponent's leg at times. It's all about what I do on my leg. Absolutely. And that's why he wins so many matches with the lowest average. 140. But then he has this ability to sort of go up when his opponent goes up, doesn't he? Move through the gears when needed as well. 134. Chris Carl, 123. One, two, three, but six starts at it here. So he went for the treble 18. 55. I think if it had hit the 54, I think he would have plonked another one in the 18, personally. Yeah, yeah, I agree. You often think players are going to go there because they're going to go for the ball, but actually they're just looking 90. for 18. Chris Ricard, 68. Leave the finish. A double. He needs to get to a double and hit a double here because Palmer is poised. It's double four. And it's Game found. On the sixth leg. It's a deciding leg between Ricky Palmer and Chris Wickenden. Neither player yet to pick up any points Some in the this final group. leg, Ricky to throw first. Game on. No, and this has been an enjoyable contest from both. And I just think the loser of this one 100. may take some picking up. Because they've given it everything here. One hundred. Both starting steadily. One hundred. Are we already at the point where if you lose this match, you've pretty much resigned to, to not qualifying from this group? Or is there a way back for either of these players? 60. Just looking at it now, I think the loser of this is done already. I don't see a way back. And if they're thinking that, then it's a thought that could weigh heavy. 132. Palmer in a decent position. He now knows that he's got six darts from here to get this job done. And that's 16. what he will have been thinking. Before this leg started, just get it done in 15. If he beats me, then fair play to him. 
59. It's not the best setup, though. It could invite pressure with a big visit here. Eighty-five. Ricky O'Carroll. No Wall pressure Wilson applied. Chain. So Palmer has time on his side. Should, should imagine fourteens. Seventy-eight. Fabulous setup play from Ricky Palmer to leave double sixteen, and he will come back for three clear match starts. In terms of trying to make it through to finals, Ricky like Chris Wickenden is. Standing right above the tungsten trapdoor. Is Ricky Palmer about to pull the lever? Game shot on the Perhaps match, Ricky Palmer. A 4 3 win for Palmer. His first points at the Moda Super Series. His first win on debut and a defeat that could be disastrous for Chris Wickenden, who is going to have a mountain to climb. Palmer defying the higher average. But look at the finishing in that game. It was really good. But is Chris Wickenden finished already? That remains to be seen. Coming next, Cordeca against Shane McGurk. This is the final straight. Your horse is challenging for the lead. Victory is so close, you can taste it. This magnificent animal giving everything for his jockey. And in the last strides, your horse is beaten. Fortunately, with Coral, you'll get a free bet up to £10 if your horse finishes within a length of the winner. Available every day of the season. Coral. Welcome back to the Moda Super Series, where before the break, we saw Ricky Palmer get the better of Chris Rickington by four legs of three. That rounded off the third round of fixtures for the afternoon session. Prior to that, we saw victories for Shane McGurk against Alex Small by four legs to two. And Makura Suzuki getting the better of Cordeca by that same score. And this is what it does then as far as the table is concerned. Makura Suzuki has picked up more points in three games in Group C than she did in 15 games in Group A. Shane McGurk and Alex Small keeping close company and behind in second and third respectively. Next up for us, Cordeca is in action up against Shane McGurk and watching this one in the commentary box. It's a very good afternoon once again to Phil Bars and Chris Murphy. Yeah, another day at the Moda Super Series and it's been a day of decent darting duels including that last one. Ricky Palmer getting the better of Chris Wickenden picking up his first point Palmer on first debut of the Moda first. Super Series. Game on. Leaving Wicken and stranded at the foot of the table. Joining Core Decker on two points. Decker now trying to join Shane McGurk on four points by beating him. McGurk trying to join Makura Suzuki at the top of the 96. table. 96. Yeah, and I completely agree. Just looking at the table here, Chris, another big game in this context of Group C because Core Decker can then join Alex Small and Shane McGurk 100. with a win here. But as you alluded to there, that if McGurk wins, he goes level on points with Makura Suzuki. So... All of a sudden, we were potentially thinking that there could be two runaway 99. players in this group. But all of a sudden, it's getting rather bunched again. It could get tight. We did think it would be. The next game, I think, is the one that is really going to decide. We, we mentioned that Chris Wickenden could be done by losing that match. If he loses the next one, he's definitely done. 60. And Makuru Suzuki would be in an incredible position, particularly if Core Decker can get the better of Shane McGurk here. Because she would then be four points 45. ahead of her nearest rival.
59. It'll be really, really interesting if it does play out that way. One hundred and thirty-four. McGurk leaving one, two, two after a dozen darts in leg one against the throw. It's been a disappointing decker so far in this group. One hundred and forty. One win Shane McCall, one hundred and twenty-two for the Norwegian giant. Another leave double seven. Game shot on the first leg. Shane McGurk. What a finish that is. A one, two, two. To get this game going. A break Second leg change well. through first. Game on. Yeah, Shane McGurk's growing into this. He started rather slow in the group, but we're now seeing the real arrow. One out of the Yeah, and I know you sort of highlighted him as one of the players to beat in this group. And we're starting to see that, aren't we? McGurk. 96. Only blot on his copybook is the 4-2 the defeat to Makuru Suzuki. 81. I know we're playing with numbers here and looking at potential outcomes that if Makuru can beat Chris Wickenden and get to eight points, do you feel she's then only two wins away between now and tomorrow afternoon? of booking a place in Saturday night's final. I think someone will get through on 12 points. That, that 100. probably doesn't answer your question because it's possible that more than one player will be on 12 points and they might be in second and third. But I think somebody will get through on 12 points. In this 57. Week. I completely agree with you. I'm just, just looking at the way this is now panning out that it's a big passage of play that if Makura could go through 55. the card, then I think she's there. Yeah, yeah, a win away. She'll get one win tomorrow, I feel sure. But that's what we were kind of saying, myself and Matthew Edgar, earlier in the week. I would not rule any 100. player out. Shane Lucar, 125. Getting through to finals night. Makura included, even though she only won two matches. Well, I was in full agreements with you. 65. Right, Cole Decker, 114. Wants 114 to get this game level. Fifty-eight. Shane your car sixty. This was Owen Bates. We'd see the flatty come into the equation, but that's not in McGurk's Being shot on the locker. second leg. Shane McGurk. However, he just plonks one in, steps across and hits tops. Third leg quarter through first. Game on. Yeah, McGurk halfway there. And starting to get the feeling, even though Core's not playing terribly badly in this game, that one of the reasons his average is up by 90 is that he hasn't had a double 45. yet. 45. So he hasn't had the chance to wreck it. I think this is looking like the first game where we're going to see a dominant win. I, I'm starting to to think that Cole Decker is just not on it today. 58. Yeah, I think he's having an, an off day and we just look at the scoring stakes and, and that says it all that in every element that Shane McGurk is outscoring Cole Decker here and it is a, just 80. a genuine scoring average from, from Decker at the moment because as you said there, he has another chance to miss doubles to wreck it. 83. Eighty-seven. And McGurk has hit both of those double attempts, including that brilliant one-two-two two to kick off this encounter. One hundred and fourteen. Fourth match of the day, and McGurk's last is against Ricky Palmer, a man who has just won for the first time. One hundred and twenty. Cord Decker's last game is against Chris Wickenden. Feels like a battle of two players that are struggling today. Yeah, and that's unfortunate from Cordeca that we just heard by the, the noise that the dart literally clattered off the wire and unfortunately it's left a bogey number and Shane McGurk has stepped in. 
57. Shane Rickard, 80. Well, he took out 122. Two. He took out 60. Now he's looking at 80. Will just be the one dart. He had to step across. 40. Call the car 112. Get the right. Yeah, and he said it all there for you, giving it the, the handshake. Like it does. Oh. Oh, dear. I was going to say, does get a 60. dart at double. He's made a, a real mess of it. Two big numbers Shane missed Rickard by Cordecker. Hasn't had a dart at double in the game. Maybe should have been coming away anyway there, Phil, with a dart standing up like that. But double ten for Shane McGurk. Game shot on the zip. third leg. Shane McGurk. Yeah, I, I completely agree with you there, Chris, that the the dart, he should have stepped away. Four leg Shane to move first. Himself. Game on. And it was the first time, really, that we've seen a, a big reaction from Cordeca. Fury from the Norwegian, who just knows that it's not Decker's day. He's looked cool as a cucumber all week, but we're just starting to see signs of he's feeling the pressure right now. The heat is on. 125. A little bit of pressure evident. He's feeling it. He knows, I think, that it's slipping away. 60. As for the arrow, well, he's going in the right direction. One hundred. Having a little bit of a play with his arrows right now, Shane McGurk. looking at both cases on that table. They both look like checking luggage mm -hmm. at the airport. Yeah, McGurk used to have something a little bit more garish. 95. Well, Decker still going, One still fighting, not Take rolling over. But Shane McGurk may reply. Something sizable himself. 140, Kodokan 96. 96 to get a break back and a leg on the board for Decker. Double, double or treble? Treble 20 leaves double eight. 80. And a Shane dart Yukar goes missing. Six. So will McGurk get a match dart at this 106? Well, it was the first dart he's had at double in the whole game. Core Decker. But he's about to get three more. 56. Cordy Car 16. Not threatening the 106, so double eight for Decker to get one back. One left. Can he adjust? No score. Shane Rickard 16. How's that not gone in? Go on then, Shane. Straight for it, pal. Boo. Tops. Tens. 30. Cordial Car 16. The, the sigh of frustration from Shane McGurk. Two match starts have come and gone for McGurk. Getting shot on the fourth Cordeca leg. Cordeca steps Cordeca. in. Pins double eight, second dart in that visit. Fifth leg Cordial through first. Game on. Cordial's trying to get himself together. He knows in the short format it's never over. On average, at the 59. Super Series, once a week, do we see a player come back from 3 0 behind to win 4 3? 134. Is this the one. Well, that's once in basically 1 in 100. It's 1 in 104, isn't it? But it's, yeah. 60. The 1%. Is he going to be in the 1% club? It's a very exclusive club. 96. Ninety-six. Ninety-six. 
looking for 171 to leave a ton. 58. Still hope for Decker here. He's behind on his own throw, but a big visit and all that changes. Needs another treble. 100. Can't find it. So McGurk has six to get rid of 2-1-3. 139. To leave 74 after 12. Fantastic response from McGurk after missing two match darts. 80. Shane Rukar, 74. 63 remaining, so it will be one match dart, and it'll be at the ball. And he's Game nailed it, Shane McGurk. McGurk, not for the first time today. That's the biggest win of the day. McGurk averaging 91, hitting half of his double attempts, four out of eight, and two brilliant bullseyes also had a 1-2-2 two, two in there as well. And Shane McGurk is amping up the pressure on Makuru Suzuki at the top of the table. But she's in action next. She takes on bottom place, Chris Wickenden. Meet Rob's Grand Mary. She loves nothing more than a day at the seaside and an ice cream. And Rob, well, he wouldn't miss it for the world. By taking time outs on his account, he's making time for moments that really matter. Winner. Setting it up is simple. Choose from days to weeks at a time, or customise it. When you play, play safe at Bet365. Welcome back, everyone, to this Group C action here. Week 7 of Series number 5, and we have a huge game at the top of the table here. It's going to be Chris Wickeden against Makuru Suzuki. Makuru is 3 from 3 so far. A win here would put her on the verge of finals night. She'd have, she'd have one throwing arm in. But also for Chris Wickerton, this is must win, but a defeat here. And I think there is no way back. Chris, do you agree? First leg, Chris, to throw first. Game on. Yeah, well, it's that darting definition, isn't it, of a four-pointer at the Super Series. If Makuru Suzuki wins, she's eight points clear of him. He remains six points adrift of second place. 60. Shane McGurk. And that could get worse by the end of the day. But if he wins, he's only four points off the pace. And there's still a little bit of a, a light at the end of what would still be a very long tunnel, but it'd be visible. Is there a glimmer of hope? 100. 100. Of course, the pair have played already three times this week. When they met on Monday, Wickenden beat Suzuki 4-1. On Tuesday, they beat a 4-0. And when the pair played yesterday, the result was 4-1 to Makuru Suzuki. 100. I 
think importantly in this game it is Wicked Anu has the darts which forces Makuru to 55. find something special. Again, for those just joining us, it is predetermined who has the darts, but it is 60. equal across the two days in this group. All players will have the throw. Equal opportunities. Yep, with the fixtures played in reverse order on a Friday from a Thursday. 83. Yeah, and with that being said, it makes the last game huge because it is a four-pointer because Makura will play Alex Small last game today and first game tomorrow. Yeah, well, assuming he beats Ricky Palmer, which isn't actually a safe assumption anymore for me. But if he does do that, then he'll be a couple of points behind her if she wins this. 40. Chris Meaning that it would still be in his hands to get ahead of her by the end of their two fixtures. But no certainty she'll win. Remember, Chris does lead the head-to-head -head this week. And he's looking at double eight. Makiru nodding, knowingly. First layer. Chris that has been his strength this week. He's taken out a few of those big finishers. 136. Second Chris Wickenden to, throw to first. get this match underway. Yeah, the, the big... Three figure outs have been really good, but I've been disappointed with his scoring. But I don't think the scoring radars fired often enough for me. 55. I actually think he struggles to adjust Chris Wickenden. When you watch, we've seen a lot of the, you know, when when a dart's low on the treble 20, for example, and the, the camera angles we show. But if it's One a good and 40. couple of centimetres below it, it, he very rarely actually makes the adjustment into the treble. It has to be a perfect guide. So it's no surprise, really, that when he gets the first dart right, then he can take out those big finishes because everything is just followed. 140. He sometimes just has that, that little little problem with making it. Now, he doesn't need to make an adjustment here. That's perfect. 140. He his way in for the second time. And he's really attacking the Suzuki throw here. Complete contrast in style. 96. These camera angles are a testament to that, that how different the entry of angle is. Look at that. He's found something in this match. He's really got his range. 121. Last start was uh, a little bit erroneous, but doesn't really matter that much. Suzuki wants 140 minimum here. And she's not going to get it. 100. Chris Yokar, 100. Start, it's not enough in this situation because Wickham are now looking to break tops, tops, I would say. Because of the angle of that first start would have blocked 60. most of the bed. Makuru Yokar, 110. Yeah, rather half-hearted, wasn't it? And maybe ill-advisedly so with Makuru Suzuki on a makeable finish, but she's not going to make that finish because once again, want to check out the first starts in a big one. Or a little 40. one on that occasion. Chris Rukar, 40. Anyway, Pugs looking at tops for 2 0 and a break. Game shot Harry on the second leg. Chris Wickenden. Chris Wickenden leads 2 0. And at last, is this the real. Third leg, Chris to throw first. Wickenden. Game on. Has he turned up? And Makiru Suzuki. And we've seen the opposite. She has had a little bit of a break here. Three matches between this and her last match. As 125. Finds a beautiful bedfellow there. But yeah, she... We've got to try and just recapture that form from earlier today when she had three matches in quite a short space of time. 140. Forty. Just looking at both shirts on offer in this game as well, Chris. They're both colourful. One hundred and forty. The one's literally black and white, Phil. <laughs> 
60. There you go. Look at the patterns glistening. It's certainly loud. In the red. Makira Suzuki. How many times? Just the once. 100. But she has really taken the darts off Wickenden, who was in cruise control. Now remember, Chris Wickenden twice today has been 2 0 up. Twice he's lost 4 2. 140. Makira Rukar, 120. going to repeat itself for a third time. Oh, 17 would have left the ball. 51. Leave Crucial Carl, 136. We've seen this before. Not this time. So Makuru should get at least one dart. 95. To break back. Makuru Carl, 70. May get two. <laughs> well, that's... Unconventional from Makuru Suzuki. 38. Chris Yukar, 41. I've got no words, Chris. Yeah, really? I mean, it wouldn't have been surprised to see the second dart fly towards the bullseye, to be honest. Wickenden has lost from 2 0 up twice. Is he going to get 3 0 up for the first time today? Game shot on the third layer. Chris so Wickenden. Makuru Suzuki missed her chance at double. Chris Wickenden hasn't missed anything in the outer ring in this match. Fourth leg, Makuro to throw first. Game on. Have you ever seen on 70 a potential treble 20 double five fruit? <laughs> 140. There were two darts left, maybe, Phil. Sixty. But that's the. The difference for Chris Wickenden in this game is being hitting his doubles. It started with that brilliant one three six, and he's carried on from there. Yeah, completely. And this may be the catalyst that he needs 36. to springboard himself back into this Group C contention. Because as you said, he was teetering on the trap door. 100. We mentioned it. One hundred and forty. The previous match, didn't we? One in a hundred shot to come back from three 0 behind at the Super Series. Is it going to be Makuru with the miracle? One hundred and eighty. Not this time around, I don't think. Well, Chris Wickenden has already taken out one three six. He hasn't missed a dart a double in a game. It's possible to seal the game in the most sensational style. Treble 20. Can't be found. So Suzuki will get at least one more dart to keep hanging on in this Recorder contest. Car 64. Should be the 16's corridor. Another or a single eight. It's one dart at double 16. 32. It doesn't go. Chris Yukar, 102. Well, a treble and she's in trouble because Wickenden hasn't missed a double. Choices. He fancied that as a guy, didn't he? And I, I, I get it in that situation as well. 70. The, the lie, Yukar, especially 32. the way his dart sit was perfect, but a lifeline for Makuru Suzuki coming back for double 16. Game and shot on this the time she hits. Makuru Suzuki. Makuru has one on the board. Well, the only little reason like why Chris I could stir first the pot a little bit and suggest that this game isn't over yet is because, yes, one player has been the dominant force, the better player in the match, Chris Wickenden, no doubt about that, but he's got to three he legs. Is. He hasn't won a match yet today. She hasn't lost the match yet today. That could just... Be a little seed of doubt in his head. 140. And McCurry kicks off with a two treble visit after Wickenden came up dry. 96. 
Here's the miracle making her move again. Needs a treble here. 83. And finds one. No treble for Wickenden. And now Makuru has stolen the darts here. Another treble would be handy. 83. That will do. And for the first time, the averages are just about levelling out and meeting each other. I may it be a way back, you know. 59. Is the... Twist in full mist here. What a dart that was. 105. Mm, there wasn't too much wrong with that one. Suzuki leaving himself 90. And this would be for the break of throw. So she would then have the darts to tie up at 3 3 and Wicked and then must be feeling 90. like he's sinking in the quicksand. Big, big exchange this. Could be some darting deja vu going on inside Wickenden's mind. The ball. Oh, in the ball. Game Makuru shot Suzuki. on the thick Makuru Suzuki. He's taking the game to Chris Wickenden now. He hasn't been beaten like and she's refusing to be beaten. Game on. Everyone else in that practice room is cheering on Chris Wickenden here. They want this group bunched up. Well, she's not stopping, is she? One on the she's not holding back. A beautiful bullseye finish for the 90, and then off in the next leg with the maximum. Chris Wickenden, he must feel like he's had his hands tied behind his back here. I'm going to drop the M-bomb. Has she got the momentum? Well, I'll tell you what she has got. Another treble 20, that's four. Look at the disgusted look on her face after that. 83. Start. Denied her the chance of a perfect leg. 140. All set for 3-3 three, three here. She was 3-0 behind. Seven. Well, that's just a little bit of optimism now offered to Wickenden. Needs to find a treble here. 60. Well, suddenly it's going wayward. Suzuki had a supreme spell, but now she's struggling to find a big number. Seven in the previous visit. Eleven. Followed by eleven. The wheels have come off in this leg. The 90 finish, the 180 kick off. And now all of a sudden... 100. She's still pretty much the favourite to win the leg. If she hits 100 at least here... And she should do that now. Wicked on he's on an enormous finish. One hundred. So despite Chris Yukar, one hundred and fifty eight. Slip. Seven followed by eleven. Eighteen in six darts from Suzuki. He's still in command. She's still got a chance to tie it up at three three. Particularly if he doesn't find a treble 44. and he's not Mikuru even found Yukar, a big number. He's not any better off than she is here. Uh, one twenty to send us all the way. Three on the spin for Makuru Suzuki. It's going to get a dart at tops to level the game. 80. Overpitched it. Chris Yukar, 114. And for the first time, Chris, that's the first time I've seen some reaction from a miss from Makuru. Does he have to hit this? Yes. Even though he would have the darts and a decider, does he need to avoid a decider? Yes. Does he hit it? 94. No, he doesn't. Makuru Yukar, 40. So Makuru Suzuki... From 3-0 behind, 
has three darts at tops. That becomes two at double ten. And still two tens. 30. And maybe two tenths. Chris Yorkar, 20. Head in hands for Makuru Suzuki. Chris Wickenden wants the same double to get his first win of the group. Comes back looking at double ten. Game and this time, Chris, Chris Wickenden. Wickenden gets over the line. The relief is evident. Makuru Suzuki fight back was on, but it is Pugs who finds a way to bag the points and keep his hopes alive in this Group C as it's all getting a little bit congested. But coming up after the break, we're going to see Alex Small against Ricky Palmer. Hey, I'm Gary Ashburn, and I've been working in the world of collectibles and memorabilia for over 30 years. I'd love you to join me every Sunday night at 10 p.m. for Collectibles Guru, where we showcase awesome items from the world of sport, music, TV, and film. You'll hear the stories behind the genuine signatures and get a front row seat into the world of sport and showbiz. So tune in every Sunday night at 10 p.m. only here on Sporty Stuff TV. Well, this group is getting a little bit bunched up now. That's after Makuru Suzuki was beaten for the first time. Chris Wickenden winning for the first time in the previous match. A see off Suzuki, who's top of the table with six points. Same as Shane McGurk. In fact, McGurk is actually ahead by one leg of Makuru Suzuki. Alex Small looking to join them with three wins from four matches. If he can get the better of Ricky Palmer... First leg, Alex, you threw first. Who is fresh Game from on. his first win after he got the better of Wickenden just a few games ago. So, Small looking to join the top two... 85. ...on six points, and that makes it a much more congested group C. Yeah. As 95. we started this one, and it was looking as if we were going to have... A couple of runaways, but now twenty five on a Friday. Yeah, it would be a clear separation if Alex Small wins this game, wouldn't it? Three players on six and then three players on two. It would look One like it would be three players battling out for two places, but the last few results could change that because the the gap one hundred second and fourth. Could end up being only a couple of points by the end of the day. Well, especially because Chris has to play core no, as well. Yeah. So if one of them will get two, four points. What they don't want is anyone really getting to eight. But if Small wins this, somebody will. Because he plays Makira Suzuki in the last Ricky one. 170. 170 for Palmer here. This would be a souvenir to take away from his debut. Not quite. One hundred and twenty-five. Alex Car forty. Game shot on the first leg. Alex Small. Ricky Palmer applied the pressure, but Alex Small was up to the task. Second leg. Ricky to throw first. It's Game a hard throw, but it's an important one because Palmer applied the pressure there. What a speedy leg of darts as well that was. Fifty-six. Thirteen darter for Alex Small, and the leg was completed in just eighty seconds. 100. Yeah, Palmer is not slow, is he himself? 60. I think he's a couple of bits. One, I think he's settled into the Super Series now. 
but also he's getting dragged into Alex Small's rhythm himself. 45. Yeah, you can see just racing into the hockey there, a little bit like Kevin Painter decided to do yesterday. Nothing will beat that. That was like Usain Bolt starting in the Olympics. 96. Yeah, just stepping in so quickly. Small just sort of wanders in and then just so quick with throwing his darts. 42. Well, the previous leg was pretty much over at this point. Gone in 80 seconds. 60. So he's, he's there before Ricky's even got his darts out of the board. 100. This game, they don't have to stop, do they? They just keep walking and throwing and walking and throwing. That's what we see at the very elite level. When certain players play each other, they bring the best out of each other. I go back to MVG and Adrian Lewis back in the day and MVG Gary and even fast forward now, Gezi and, and Michael, they bring the best out of each other just because of that rhythm they're playing in. He had to go the 170 in the first leg. He got the first treble. Couldn't get the second. This time he couldn't get the first, but he got the second. 134. Alicar, 116. I would love to land one below that, but he can't manage 60. it. 60. Ricky Ocar, 36. Palmer himself wants double 18. Now he's chasing across the nines. Cannot go inside. Doesn't last start, though. 27. Alicar, 56. And that's frustration for Palmer. Reactions from Ricky. 20. Ricky will no come celebrations for Small. Palmer gets a reprieve. One for double four. First part done. Second Game part done. The second leg. Second Ricky leg Palmer. one. All square. Three games like left after this. First. Game on. This afternoon. Then we'll have ten more for you tonight when Group B gets underway. Make sure you tune in. One you're watching on the Motor Super Series YouTube channel around the world or live on Sporty Stuff TV. The action gets underway at 10 UK time when Ryan Palmer, One that man's brother, Mike Gillett and Tommy Lishman join Kevin Painter and Haruki Muramatsu. 71. Ricky Palmer, 71. Well, that was kind of Alec, wasn't it, too? Chuck one of his darts on the floor in... In response, very sportsmanlike. That's what mate's doing? Fifty-nine. One hundred. Just looking at the the fixtures we have left, and this is all if buts and maybe, of course. But if Ricky Palmer could get the better of Alex here, and then win his last game. Against Shane McGurk, all of a sudden 60. he comes in to contention as a as a Group C candidate after a shaky start to life here at the Super Series. Yeah, I mean I'm, I'm not ready to write anybody off yet. I know he's sort of half with Chris Wickham, but then when he beat Makuru Suzuki, could have put himself back in the picture. Small looks for double five. One hundred and twenty-five. Ricky Ocar, eighty-seven. Palmer. Okay, only a nine, so seventy-eight remaining. Treble 18, he could go, he could have gone double 19, double top there. 47. I think it might have I been a better route. Five. It'd be disappointed not to get at least a dart of the ball at that visit. Three. I think dart one blocked double one there for Alec. Yeah, it's always difficult. It really is that, that five finish. If you've left one in in the single one, blocking Game the shot double. Of the third leg. Palmer Ricky Palmer now has broken the throat. Yeah, what I was going to say, Phil, is that there's every possibility that, Four, five, Ricky, that literally first. every single result in this group could be reversed tomorrow. And you get one of those groups where there's going to be multiple 85. players on the same amount of points. Could we be dusting the Moda Super Series abacus off? Absolutely. 43. No player yet in this group has sort of announced themselves as... The top dog, the top dart. 100. Makuru Suzuki, yes, she won the first three matches, but I don't think anybody really felt she was going to go and win all five, and that won't happen now. 134. I think if anybody gets away with four wins, they're going to be in a very, very good position. I completely agree. 99. Um, 
more and more this is getting bunched up, the more intriguing it gets. And then every leg becomes 100. important. Forget points. It's just legs. Forty four. One hundred and eighty from Alex Small, and he punished Ricky Palmer a little bit there. You may have seen the reaction. That's because he realised that when he hit that single 59. nineteen, a little car forty four would have left him a finish. Yeah, and that comes back to game shot on the fourth leg. Alex Small, he has paid the price for it as Alex Small breaks straight back. Forty four goes into twelve double sixteen. Like Alex to throw first game on. Well, the speed of this match, it was still running at less than two minutes a leg. 141. Hit the eight minute mark after that first visit in the fifth leg. 44. Alex Small's in control of this tie again. 46. Press the, um, the turbocharge button. And it's how long is this spell going to last? 140. Do you get the sense that Ricky Palmer's enjoying paying at this, playing at this pace? He's really 100. Sort of enthusiastic in his approach. Everything looks much more assured. 87. Yeah, I think he's much more comfortable than that deliberate pace we saw earlier. Yeah, I mean, often the problem is when you switch, and then we saw it there. 100. You end up losing the line because you've had to move away from the first dart. But when you can stay there, you can be very, very effective. 140. A little car, 114. 94th. Treble 18 leaves tops. It's not going to go. 86. So Palmer Regal should get 90. at least a dart of the ball to lead again. He gets two at double 15. Oh, he only gets one at it because he's gone inside and you can see the fury of Ricky Palmer. 82. Really fancied that. I like your car, 28. Perfect first start. No small to lead again. One left at double seven. He's come inside. Regular car, eight. And that's the issue when you start chasing around the board as a speedster. Double four then for Palmer. Oh, he's in the wrong bed. He's in the wrong no double. Score. I like your car, no seven. score. I like your car, seven. And Small breathes again. Double two. Just saw Three. a slight pause there. Ricky Ocar, and Small eight. tried to make the adjustment. I'll make a point on that in a minute because we haven't got time to breathe. But Palmer Game shot is in front way. again. Ricky Seals Palmer. the double four second time of asking. I'm going to go back to the Alex Small setup there. The action didn't look set for me, Six Chris. Like the the first. Game on. the single three. Went in at a funny angle, which says to me he wasn't set. Yeah, and then the second dart. He 100. just paused, didn't he? Second dart double very slightly. If he wasn't comfortable, maybe he 60. could have just stopped completely. And that's not something that this pair seems to want to do is stop. No, and I completely agree with you. And that comes back from that first visit. I don't think he was ready to attack 82. the board. So, board management... Again, knowing your game, you should step back. I know it's not ideal, but you'd rather throw 16. three proper darts than what we saw there. Well, Ricky Palmer's won three proper legs, and he's one away from making it two wins from his last two matches, having one lost his first two matches. Could be a total turnaround today for him. 60. That shake of the head and raise of the eyebrow from Alex Small. Says it all. I do also wonder if the sign of speed is also a sign of now feeling comfortable on the stage. Ricky Palmer has played a few matches and now he's feeling at home. 140, Ricky Carl, 120. Treble for tops. It's not going to go. 60. You'll be disappointed not to be on a double. How much pressure will this 60 be under? 140, Ricky of pressure. 60. Now Palmer to win it. He's going to get two at tops. 
Game Only needs the one. Ricky Palmer. Back to back wins for Ricky Palmer as he joins the Group C party as the table is now getting congested. Every point is going to be vital in this campaign. But coming up after the break, we're going to see Chris Wickenden against Cordeca. Catch the best thoroughbred racing from South Africa alongside 15 live greyhound races at 11 o'clock every Tuesday, Thursday and Friday morning live here on Sporty Stuff TV. A super serious so we've got one round of fixtures left to play on this Thursday afternoon at the live lounge in Port. So this is what we've seen so far today. Before the break, we saw Ricky Palmer get the better of Alex Small by four legs of two. Prior to that, Chris Wigden got his first uh, win on the board, this time on the right side of a 4-2 victory against Makura Suzuki. And Shane McGurk got the better of Cordeca by four legs to one. This is how it correlates. As far as the table is concerned, uh, Shane McGurk leading the way with Makura Suzuki on six points. McGurk, one of the favourites going into the session and he is proving exactly why. While Suzuki dropping her first game last time and be looking to recover come the end of the day. But next up for us, we're going to see Chris Wickenden and Court Decker in action. There he is, the Norwegian giant. Looking to get a big victory to round off his day. He takes on Chris Wickenden, who's looking to get one of his own. Paul Hinks in the background. He's going to be at the forefront of the action as our referee, Chris Murphy and Phil Bars are down in the booth. Thank you very much, Henry. As we enter our final round of fixtures, everything is to play for. And all of a sudden, we're back to square one almost, Murph, because it was looking clear-cut at one point, but now it's all getting in a little bit congested. Yeah, but whoever loses this match is going to have the biggest mountain to climb tomorrow because both Cordeca and Chris Wickenden, as you saw on the league table just there, They've only won one game. They've only got two points. First leg, Chris, to third first. So the loser of this is going to be at least on. four points off the pace in terms of getting to second spot, which is all you need. It's not about winning the group. It's about finishing in the top two to make it to finals night. 78. Whoever wins it could be just two points adrift. But if Makiru Suzuki and Shane McGurk both win their last two matches, then the loser is going to be done, aren't they? Six points with only ten to play for. Surely that'll be that. So massive match for the pair of them because it's out of their control after this. Yeah, look. 83. The loser of this would probably have to go through the card tomorrow and that's unlikely from what we've seen today. Yeah, we said 12 points would get somebody through. I'm not certain that it's a guarantee of getting through, but... Yeah, that would mean they would need to win all five matches to uh, get to that tal that tally of points. 57. Yeah, and it's been contrasting for both of these players as well because after the first couple of rounds of fixtures, you'd have said that Core had played better, but the last couple, Chris has come into it and started to find his range and rhythm.
And he played well. He played really well against... 60. Makiru Suzuki for most of the match until she started to mount a comeback. And then she kind of handed it to him in that sixth leg. Suzuki really stuttered. So... 87. For me, Wickenden, although he's recorded a victory, he hasn't really won a match yet. Because he was really up against it, swimming, swimming against the tide and got away with it a little bit. 85. Kyle Carr, 112. But uh, the biggest decline has been from Cordeca. Yeah, in game one against Alex Moore, he lost 4-3. The average was around that 90 mark. 138. Three maximums. Uh, three from four on the outer ring, including a 1-2-1 one, one checkout. So he started the session really well. Yeah, and then he won his next game. Since then, it's just seemed to have tailed off for Decker. And the 106. Call of car 74. The old saying seems to have been proved right. The bigger they are, the harder they fall. Double top, though, to take the first leg against the throw in this 34. one. Can't manage Crucial it. Crucial car 32. So after the exquisite setup from Wickenden, now looking at double 16 to take the lead. They're erratic. One high, one low. Can he find the middle? No score. Cordial no. car, 40. Double 16 is his double. That's his usual comfort zone. Cordeca can steal the leg. Being shot on the first leg. Cordeca. top, punishing those three misses from Chris. And Decker. Second leg quarter through first. first Game on. In this potentially crucial contest. And what he get for just a comfortable hold of throw here. 140. Sixty. One hundred and thirty-five. This is better though from Corey. He seems to have rediscovered the kind of form we saw earlier on in the session. One hundred. Was tidy seeing off that leg and then starts one forty one three five. Ninety two. It's down to a finish after nine. You'll be thinking, where's this play been for the last hour? One hundred. Cardio car one hundred and thirty four. Now new school players would go New School was treble eighteen top tops, but Cause a bit of an old school. Well, even that's a rare route, isn't it? On the one three four, some players do it. Joe Cullen likes it to leave double sixteen with ninety eight two treble seventeens, but yeah, with Wickenden not on a finish, I suppose he's allowed to do whatever he wants. We'll be on a finish now. One hundred quarter car thirty six. He's partial to a big one from time to time, so Decker better take this out. Game shot on the second leg. Cole Decker. Has he, got, has he got a little microphone, uh, ear, earpiece in where he can hear you? Sounds like Third leg, Chris, the third Tears first. Game on. Much better from Cole Decker, though, isn't it? Yeah, 13 dart holder throw. One hundred. Sixty-three. Potentially a big last start there because the first two were were very wild, not near the targets. Rescued the situation. Sixty. Wickedman comes up dry. Can Decker pants? Not really is the answer. Fifty-seven. Two games, 
100. Left to go. Ricky Palmer and Shane McGurk. And then Makuru Suzuki and Alex Small. Looking forward to both of them. 96. They are really going to shape this Group C. Yeah, and the way things have gone, a few moments ago I was thinking, well, Small's probably going to beat Suzuki and McGurk 41. should have the better of Palmer. But based on the last couple of results, Small losing to Palmer, that's kind of reversed. Fifty-eight. We can. It's making hard work of this leg again. Needs to find a trail. 40. Doesn't. He leaves a finish, but a big visit here from Cordeca, and his favourite for three nil. Need to treble himself. And 100. he finds one. Chris Yukar, 160. He leaves that finish, Smurf. And I say that one because we all know what happens. Yeah, when Paul Hinks is on the stage and a player wants 127. 128. Cordekar, 127. It's usually game. Trouble 19. Can't be done, so Wickenden. 99. On double six in. Crystal Made a real 32. mess of this earlier in the match. Missed three darts at it. Just wants to put one either in or on the outside wire. Getting shot on the third in layer. Chris Wickenden. Halves the deficit. On the 1 2 7 in game. Now, we all know Both the first time it, happened, first it, was, game it, it was an accident and it ended up going in being one of those darts viral moments. But there's no set way a caller has to end a game. So. On that 140. one, would you just make it a, a trademark? And if someone takes that 127, always end it that way now? Uh, well, yeah, maybe. I'm not sure if uh, every tournament director would be pleased with that, but it's his brand, isn't it? It did actually happen. Uh, pe people may not remember. It happened again. It happened when before we moved here at the Super Series when we were the... 121 in Southampton. It was Andy Jenkins who took out 124 in game, and Hinksy called it exactly the same way. 59. Well, just we were encouraging people to get in touch earlier on at MSS Darts. We were also talking about who might win Champions Week, and Daryl Pilgrim, who was my tip, has got in touch. 76. And he's in Mallorca watching the Super Series. Get outside, Daryl. Have a great holiday, Daryl. Ahead of Champions Week. One hundred. Car one hundred and sixty-four. Yeah, checking out the competition. Thanks for getting in touch, and do indeed enjoy a bit of well-deserved sunshine. Part of the preparation for being back here on the Super Series for the big one. Champions Eighty-six. Week. We're halfway there now. Ninety six, quarter car seventy eight. Well, he could go treble fifteen. Fifty four. One hundred. Kodakar, 24. Decker to increase Each that lead. the fourth leg, Kodeka. He's done well there because he had made an absolute mess of the setup. So to put that to the Before back of Christ his mind and then first, push it game off on. like that is some good stuff there from Kodeka. Yeah, and Chris Wickenden, maybe it was a false dawn on that win against the tabletop of Makuru Suzuki. Now he's up against it again, and it's all going wrong. One on the floor. 120. Two in the bed. And one on the floor. 100. Let's 
A great dart for Chris Wickenden. Fill it up. 140. Can't manage it. He's still in this, isn't he? Fifty nine. We told that Ricky Palmer had sped up in his previous match. I, I feel like Cordeck has slowed down. Sixty. Yeah, I just think that maybe he's just trying to refine that form and just reset himself, perhaps. Yeah, I don't think the throw is any slower. I think the throw is fine. I think he's just almost like. Walking around a little deflated. You know, yeah. like when dominoes get your order wrong or something. And you sort of have this sulky walk. That's what Cordeck is doing 18. right now. I'm a finely tuned athlete, Murph. I <laughs> don't know what dominoes is. The game you play, it's got like numbers on it and stuff. 82. Chris Ricard, 101. Big moments here. Wicken and at the board first. 101 to save this contest. Going to get a dart, double 12 to save it. And he's gone the wrong side 95. into the double nine. Cordeca should get at least one match dart here. He gets two. A double ten. But he Seventy. Can't find the target. Because you will cast six. Two match starts have come and gone as Wicked and returns for double three. And of all players, this is the one player that this actually suits. Yeah, well, we said this yesterday when he was on it. He wants to do it. We talk about one up, one in on double one. Sure That's one under, Chris one Wickenden. in on double three for Chris Wickenden. A man with a plan, and he pulled it off perfectly. Six leg Corder through the first. Yeah. Game on. Interesting to see how Cordeca reacts here because he has had two match starts. Will he get any more? 57. One hundred. Ricky Palmer taking on Shane McGurk after this. McGurk currently 83. off the table. If he wins the match, he'll stay there. If he loses it, he'll at least temporarily drop a spot. 97. And then Makuru Suzuki will try and go back 97. to the top when she faces Alex Small. But it could be... We well, could end up with four players on six points at the end of the day, couldn't we? Quite easily. 140. That's a huge 140 for Cordeca. Puts himself back in control of this leg. 60. Trebleus from Wickenden. Sixty is down to a finish, but a 140 here from Wickenden would make things interesting. Oh, that's a good dart. He can sweep from right to left here and then put one between the posts. 180! Call your car, 161. Is this match taking another turn? Treble 17 for the ball. The ball to win it for Decker. One oh, it's crazy. Is the wire. Call your car, 64. Oh, what a little spell of darts that was. The maximum from Wickenden. And then Decker narrowly missing the bullseye for a stunning 1-6-1. It's only one dart to stay in it. It's at double 16. 32. Kordeka, 25. Over to Kordeka. 25, 9, 2 at double 8. And Game this time, Cordeca seals the points. 
He missed a Rue Fraser the visit before, but it is a 4-2 victory for Cordeca. He finishes his Group C campaign on four points, and he is still in contention tomorrow. He needed that one, and there's the numbers for you. 89.94 average from Cordeca, four from line on the outer ring, but two games to go and all to play for here in Group C. Final straight. Your horse is challenging for the lead. The victory is so close you can taste it. This magnificent animal giving everything for his jockey. And in the last strides, your horse is beaten. Fortunately, with Coral, you'll get a free bet up to £10 if your horse finishes within a length of the winner. Available every day of the season. Coral. And welcome back, everyone, to this Group C session here. Week 7 of Series 5 of the Motor Super Series. Two games to go and everything to play for. At one stage today, we thought we were going to have a clean break in the league table. However, now it's all looking rather bunched. Ricky Palmer had a disastrous start here on debut. He's won the last two games and clawed himself back into contention and could finish up joint top of the table overnight. And right now, it is that man on your screen, Shane McGurk, who does lead. First leg, Ricky, to throw the first. Game on. Paul Hinks giving the players the game on. 140. Palmer starts with a two treble visit. Ninety-six. You're saying, Chris, this is a huge game for the context of the table ahead of tomorrow. Yeah, win for Ricky Palmer. And puts him eighty three. On six points. With Shane McGurk, with Makuru Suzuki. Alex Small then takes on Suzuki. If he 44. wins, he goes on six points as well. And Cordeca, having won that previous match, is on four. How big a game is it for Cordeca? Because if Suzuki and 41. McGurk win their matches, he's four points adrift. Absolutely huge. If nobody 41. gets to four wins today. Then we're really none the wiser in terms of this group. It looks like a tough task for Chris Wickend and whatever happens. He's going to have to have a day where he probably wins all of his matches to to qualify. But for everybody else, it's all to play for. Absolutely. You couldn't have put it any better. But One of the Chris Wickend still has an absolute outside chance, but it is remote. Having said that, 60. If McGurk so or car Suzuki do win, then they're on four out of five and eight points. They're probably only two wins away, so it's a huge match for them as well. It's just big, big games for everybody, whether they're in them or not. 60. Absolutely. Ricky Wakar, 94. After the first two rounds of fixtures, we thought this Group C may be going a little stale and cut and dry early doors. How wrong were we? 54. Shane Wakar, 80. Ricky Palmer's carrying on with that pacey play. Shane McGurk. We'll get one dart at top, but it's likely to be blocked partially. He's moved back to his original starting position, so 40. he thinks he can see plenty of it, and he could. You can see from that angle there. 
Nothing was in the way in the end. But he yeah, couldn't he shot find the first it. Ricky Palmer to lead one nil. And I've been really impressed with Ricky Palmer. Thank how he's grown into first this game on campaign. You could see the nerves were there in game one when he missed up twenty one darts at a double. But since then, one he's composed 40. himself. He's got back into it. Won his last two. And if he can see off Shane McGurk here, all of a sudden 58. he's a contender. We'll have to have to agree. And he'll have that day's experience when you know all the other players in the group. One hundred and forty. McGurk have been here before. Had Alex Small and Decker. Wickenden and Suzuki have been here playing all week. 94. So the, the brothers playing at finals night may still be 18. on the cards. Over to you tonight, Ryan. Would you prefer they met in the groups or in the knockout stages 60. on Saturday night oh, if it yeah. were to happen? Jane Ricard, 141. I mean, to be honest, if unless they played first game in the groups, it effectively would be knockout for one of them, wouldn't it, uh, at any point? So, there's likely to be something on it. 59. No, Steve and Tony West have played each other before, and Steve West actually averaged about 111 against him when he did. 97. Shane Wilcott, 82. It might actually bring out the best because it's a comfortable feeling. They've done it so many times. McGurk, they're out to make that less likely. There's the treble 14 route. Game shot the second leg. Prefers, when his opponent's not on a finish, then that's up to him. But he does take it out in the end. And third leg, Ricky, the third first. The game one on. It's a really good response from McGurk as well. 92. Because he was just slightly off it in, in leg one, and Ricky Palmer punished him, but. It's a way to respond. 59. 45. Dragged one into the five there, and maybe there's just a little bit of nerves creeping back in. Obviously, in the players' room, they have a, a screen they can see everything that goes on. They'll see the table as we do when it when it gets put up, so no doubt they'll know what's at stake here. Yeah, it's gonna be a really interesting 42. conclusion tomorrow. Do make sure you join us. Back on Sporty Stuff TV from three PM for the run in, but before that the first six games live exclusively on the Motor Super Series YouTube channel. Between now and then we're back on both platforms from ten PM tonight. And Ryan Palmer, Ricky's brother, gets his campaign underway. And if you're not satisfied with watching on the telly, then why not come along to the live 84. lounge here in Portsmouth? Scan that QR code on your screen right now. Go on, do it right now. And you will go to dartshop.tv where you can book. 55. And I say book rather than purchase your tickets because they are free of charge, but for that very small booking fee. But what's two quid to meet Paul Hinks? 56. Shane Ricard, 135. 55. Are you around Saturday, Phil? 95. I am. But you and I will be sat here, Chris. There you go. Phil Barr's selfie as well. That's also free. 70. Shane Ricard, 40. I've got my Neil Warnock supply ready. Shane McGurk. Looking to help himself to double ten. Green shot on the third leg. Shane the McGurk. Leg. Well, Ricky Palmer won the opener, but Shane McGurk has since got to work. Fourth leg, Shane did through first. Game on. Just showing his experience here, Shane. That the fact he's been here at the Super Series, he knows what it takes to get out of this Group C, get to Saturday night, and he's showing that right now. Ninety-six. Yeah, it's a. It's the first blow for the chasing pack. Shane McGurk winning this match. Everybody wants Ricky Palmer 100. to win it. Apart from McGurk and Makuru Suzuki. And then if she wins, suddenly it does look like two players are dominating the group. It's amazing how quickly it can change. Yeah, we've had twists and turns. 59. All over this first session of the day. 
34. That looks a perfect dart for Shane to attack. 100. Sixty. Getting a few reactions from Ricky at the moment. He's not happy with this little spell. One hundred. This has to be big from Palmer. One hundred and huge from Palmer. One hundred and forty-six. All of a sudden, he's back in this leg. Yeah, fabulous 180, and he's going to get a go at the remainder. 44. Ricky O'Carr, 127. Trouble 19 leaves the ball. Bullseye. 91. Shane O'Carr, 102. I thought he'd go for it. Leaves double 18. Trouble 14 on 102. That's new. But it's worked a treat Game for Shane McGurk. The fourth leg. Shane McGurk. That's a Barry, Barry, Barry Van Peer way of Fifth going. Fifth leg, Ricky to third first. That Game on. Unique. But it's worked for McGurk. Fifty-seven. Now, if if Shane sees this one to the conclusion as it's looking, all of a sudden. He's probably got one hand 100. in Saturday night. Yeah, he won't need to go to dartshop.tv to book his ticket. You need to do 85. that. So make sure you do. And McGurk is closing in on being on the stage. And he's been there before. We have seen him at the Super Series Super Saturday. 100. And he lost to two handy players as well. Series 3. Lost in the semi-final to Jonathan Worsley. And then in Series 4, in the final to Steve West. So, good company. Yeah, absolutely. 140. I'm right in saying both went on to win those weeks. They certainly have won weeks here. Correct. They both both did. Obviously, one was in the final. but 79. Yeah, and jo Jonathan Worsley went on to win his week as well. Week one of series three. They beat them by exclusive company. 65. Absolutely. Good use of the 25 ball segment there to leave himself on a two data. Whatever you do, don't do it, Ricky. 140. Shane McCann, 96. Very safe dart to make sure he didn't. But will McGurk get a match dart or two? Needs to find trouble 20 for... Oh, he went double-double. 46. I don't mind that. Yeah, fair, Ricky fair enough with 40. Ricky on a double. He's expecting it to go. He wanted to give himself Game the best the opportunity. Fifth leg. Ricky and he Palmer. was right to expect it to go. Palmer, not out of this yet. Six legs shown to throw... <laughs> Shane to throw first game on. <laughs> a little comedy moment there from our referee Paul Hinks. One hundred and forty. You know, almost just apologised to Shane as he walked past. No need, Paul. I get my words wrong at 135. least twelve times a day. Henry, even more. Forty-six. Is that the opening that Ricky Palmer needs? One hundred. All of a sudden, that McGurk first dart is dropping low. There a little bit of tension 84. creeping in. One hundred and thirty-nine. McGurk. Could be in trouble here. 
100. Riggio Car, 127. All of a sudden, is Palmer favourite for this match? Fifty nine. Change your car one hundred and thirty one. Three one. Treble seventeen for two double tops is the route. Not this time, so Palmer will be back to send us all the way. Forty one. Ricky your car sixty eight. Oh, okay, fifty three still on. Double top. Well you can probably hear him say get up. Change your car ninety. He knew as soon as it left his hands, that was low. 20 leaves Bull. Bullseye remaining. We've seen him hit this a couple of times already today. 44. Can't get near it this time. Ricky Ocar, 20. most important time. Palmer coming back to level us. Comes inside tens. Now he's chasing Being to shot on the six flag. Ricky Palmer. Finds it. And it is the break back he needs. Shane McGurk just gave him a little wink there. As if to say, well done. Seven in the final leg, Ricky to third first. Three Game all, on. one leg, 5 0 one shootout for two points. 43. And he has the darts. But he's only started with 43. Absolutely punished eight. to the maximum by Shane McGurk. But hang on, what's this? What about that? One hundred and eighty. McGurk's maximum answered in kind by Palmer. Sixty. As you were. Well, let's just quickly paint the picture once more. If Shane McGurk wins this match, he moves on to eight points. Four clear of the man currently in third place, Ricky 56. Palmer. Leaving him, if not a mountain, at least a big hill to climb tomorrow. If Ricky Palmer wins it, he's joint top with McGurk and Makuru Suzuki on six. That's how big this next minute or so is going to be. McGurk is down 55. to a finish. Shane McGurk, 164. Palmer leaves a finish. But it's McGurk who has first go. Was looking at two treble 19s for the ball. 92. Ricky McGurk, 167. Unless Palmer can raise the roof at the live lounge. Oh, he got the treble 20. The treble 19 would have given him a go at the bullseye. But so McGurk 99. should get McCarr, 72. at least one to win. Another 16. And tops for the victory. 52. Ricky will pass 68. going to get his chance. Here we go. 48. He's going to get one dart at tops to win it. 48. Clip the bottom wire. Car, 20. He knew he would have to move if he hit the eight. I'm sure that dart was just thrown in the area. And 16 would have been better. Double 10. Double 5. And he fails to find Ricky it. Ricky Car 20. McGurk hangs his head. Palmer comes back to blow Group C wide open. Double Game 10 shot on the match, is Ricky Palmer. and Ricky Palmer has won three games on the spin here in Group C, taking his tally to six points and go joint top of the table. McGurk has missed a huge opportunity to put his seal of approval on this group and we are going all the way. One game to go in this session coming up, Makuru Suzuki against Alex Small. Meet Rob's Grand Mary. She loves nothing more than a day at the seaside. And an ice cream. And Rob, well, he wouldn't miss it for the world. By taking time outs on his account, he's making time for moments that really matter. Winner. Setting it up is simple. Choose from days to weeks at a time, or customise it. 
When you play, play safe at Bet365. Here we go then, the final fixture of Thursday's 15 in the afternoon and it's Makuru Suzuki against Alex Small and it's another important one in Group C. Shane McGurk's defeat to Ryan Palmer means there are now three tied on six points at the top of the table. That woman there is one of them, Makuru Suzuki, the two-time women's world champion, is looking to go clear overnight if she gets her fourth win from her five matches today. If she doesn't, and Alex Small gets a victory in this one, then he will make it a four-way tie at the top. Just go first. Game on. Game on, called by Paul Hinks, our esteemed referee and esteemed company alongside me, Chris Murphy, in the commentary box. Oh, no, sorry, it's Phil Bars. Close. This Group C campaign has been superb. 125. And it all comes down to this final game of the first session and everything to play for. 135. It'd be interesting to see how Makuru deals with the pace of this game because she is a player who likes to go through a rigorous pre-shot routines, warm-ups and stretches and 100. getting herself into a zen-like state at times, but Alex Moore won't allow time for that. Not a chance. 96. But it'll be interesting to see how he copes with Makuru's pace because, like we say, she doesn't deviate at all. It's always the same, no matter if it's first start or last start. It might, it might help her in a way because she'll just sort of wander around without thinking time, and it's helping One so far. Eighty. Brilliant start from Makuru Suzuki. Every single visit in three figures, nine darts, ninety-six. One hundred. Makuru cars, ninety-six. Sixty. Leaves that double Alec eighteen Carr, in. That could be left a lot in this game. Well this would hurt. It's not gonna happen. Fifty-eight. Makuru car thirty-six. Chasing across the board now to double nine. Eighteen. Alec Car one hundred and twelve. This would hurt. If Alex Small pins the one twelve. It's not going to go, so Makura will be back. 76. Makura Rukar, 18. Double nine, Makura Suzuki. This time she does take her time approaching the hockey. All this leg, she's just wandered around and approached, but she was over at the table there. She knows it's a big moment. Being shot on the first leg, big Makura double. Suzuki. Big hit by Makura Suzuki, who is looking to be the standalone leader in Group C. Second leg, Alex, you throw first. Stage. Game on. Yeah, and if she can close one hundred and forty, four wins from five games would be a brilliant day for the miracle. Fifty-five. Yeah, be remarkable it would be considering that she only won two matches from her first fifteen. One hundred and twenty-one. Yeah, some tungsten turnaround. Fifty-nine. 
41. That's more in charge in this second leg. Eighty five. One hundred and thirty seven scoring range here in this leg. Alex Small looking set to level up at one apiece. Leave sixty two after twelve. Twenty eight. Ali Ocar sixty two. Yeah, Makaru not in this leg at all. All about small. Double 16 to take it. 46. Feels like he's just delaying the inevitable. Doesn't delay much, Alex Small, but on this occasion. Makes you wonder, Makaru just had the most brilliant first leg, and now he's playing the second leg. Like the play we saw on Monday. Alex Ocar, 16. Yeah, completely lost. The radar, the rhythm, everything. Game shot on the Alex second leg. Alex does Small. level up. One all. Well, he's shaking his head a little bit. Third leg, McCoolin will throw first. Still just two holes to throw, and if McCoolin Suzuki can get three more, then she will have that pole position going into tomorrow. One hundred. Fifty-five. One forty here would be like gold dust. Now she just wants a treble. Forty-five. One hundred. Well, still very much in the balance, this leg. Six starts apiece, nothing between them, really. That's been Makuru's problem, that we've seen too many stray darts, and that, that sounds stupid for someone that potentially could lead overnight. 121. Superbly there, but there's too many ones and fives have, have crept in. 100. Yeah, it's been a day of doing enough for Makiru Suzuki. And there's another one. And there's another five. Seven. I won't carry on. This time there was no recovery act. And all of a sudden, Alex Small is smelling a break of throw. 100. Forty one. Alec Yukar one hundred and forty six. Another I believe double sixteen. Game shot on the third leg. Alex Small. Enough. The leg was handed to him by Makuru's misfires in the last couple of visits. And then Small Fourth leg Alec to throw first. The fireworks with that one. A one four six. The lead to one. And it's looking very likely now, Phil. That we are going to have four players on six points, two separating the top five, and just four separating all of the players in this group. Yeah, and 16. if this result stays the same and Alex Small wins this one, Chris Wickerden is back in play. One hundred and eighty. Looking at 3-1 here. 60. 59. Leaves the big fish. But doesn't need to take it out. But knowing the character that he is, I'm pretty sure if he finds the two 81. trebles, he'll go for the ball. And at your car, 170. 
another. The bullseye. There we go, the big fish. Alex Small. I told you he'd go for it. And he doesn't disappoint. Alex Small reels it in to go within one of sending Group C into absolute chaos. A couple of fabulous finishes back to back. Alex Small. 146. Followed by a 170. And Makuru Suzuki was the the driver of this group has become a passenger in this match. One hundred and eighty. Well, could he add something even more special? One hundred. One four six to win. One legger, one seventy to win another. One hundred. Alex Small closing in on what could be the best performance. Saving the best till last. And look at the difference between the pair of them. Thirty six. One hundred. Well, go on, he might as well make it a hat trick when he comes back of ton topping checkouts. Sixty. Alec Car one hundred and twenty one. Treble twenty would leave him double eighteen for a hat trick of ton topping Game checkouts the match. to seal Alex the Moore. match. That is simply sensational by Small, who sees off Suzuki 4-1 with a hat-trick of finishers, a 1-4-6, a magnificent 170, and then a 1-2-1 to seal it in a dozen darts, completing the best performance of the day, 104.32 the average, and a 4-1 success that sets up a four-way tie at the top of the Group C table. Yeah, what an afternoon we've enjoyed here at the Super Series. Phil, it's lucky we got till six o'clock to try and analyze this because this has been absolute carnage. And Alex Small there saving the best performance until last. Yeah, look, this group has had twists. It's had turns after two rounds of fixtures. It was looking as if we were going to have a couple of runaways. And now after five sets of fixtures, it is all to play for and the abacus could be out tomorrow. Well, let's have a look at the results then from our matches today because it has been drama from first start to last. And, and we'll begin with Makua Suzuki because she came out the traps flying winning each of her first three. It just slowed down for her at the end of the day. Yeah, she did, but I never felt she was in control. It was almost as if she was doing enough. And yes, she did the big things when it mattered, but I never felt she's been in complete control of her game. There's been a lot of stray darts in those ones and those five. Me and Chris were talking about it in commentary, but she's done brilliantly, but she can do better. Mm -hmm. So it's a C minus on the Phil Bars report card. Uh, C. Okay, so he's, a, he's generous. You're generous, right? Let's have a look at Shane McGurk. Possibly fair to say, over the course of the five matches, the most consistent player. And he gave us some highlight moments as well, some highlight finishes. This one, 30, first off against Alex Small. And he's one of those players, isn't he, Shane, where I think we've got big expectations for him. Yeah, we have got big expectations, but for good reason. The fact that he's been here, he's got to the finals night the last two times he's been here and gone on to lose to the eventual winner in Steve West and John Worsley. And we touched about it up here earlier, that his A game is brilliant. He started a bit slow, found some good stuff in the middle and just lost out towards the end. So look, he's in the race and that's what you want going into the final day tomorrow. You have to be in the mix. Most certainly. Now, if there was a checkout competition here for every group where there was a little bit of a bonus, well, Shane McGurk would have been cursing himself when that 170 went in because prior to that, he had the best checkout of the day, the 160 against Makuru Suzuki. And this is a big point in the match to break the throw and Suzuki left on a handy enough finish herself. Yeah, and look, it's just all about the rhythm that Shane found himself in. The first treble 20 went in, doesn't break stride and then pins tops. But he has to do that more consistently. We saw a couple of missed doubles here and there creeping against Ricky in that final game where if he wins that, he's got one, one leg in the final where now everything's to play for still. However, anything Shea McGurk can do, Makuri Suzuki could do just as well in that particular match. This was one of the, the games of the day, some highlight finishing, and hey, we do love a 120, don't we? Yeah, and more importantly, this is off the back of just being hit by that 160 as well. When you get hit by one of those, it, they can hurt, but she just dusts herself off and gets on with it. And like we say there, pins the 120 for a brilliant finish to get herself back level and break back. 
Do we not talk up enough Makura Suzuki's mental strength in big scenarios? Yeah, quite possibly. And me and Chris alluded to this in commentary. You don't know when she's playing well and when she's not because the attitude's always the same. Every approach to the hockey is the same. She doesn't give anything away. Absolute poker face. And sometimes that's good in professional sport. Most certainly is. So Suzuki doing that, then got the better of Cordeca in the first round of fixtures on Sporty Stuff TV. This was to go free for free. And possibly at this point, we'll be thinking Makua could go for the card and maybe stamp her authority on the group. Yeah, possibly, but Chris and I spoke about this, that we never felt that anyone was going to go through the card today because even though players were winning games, the opposition was still having opportunities. In those first couple of rounds of fixtures, we saw numerous missed starts at double. The results could have easily gone the other way. So not once did I feel today that anyone was ever going to run through the card. Well, no one did in the end. And if anything, we don't actually know the answers to the questions because this is how the table occupies itself after five rounds of fixtures. Shea McGurk, Alex Ball, Ricky Palmer, Makua Suzuki, all tied on six points. And we know we talk about the rule of three up here and down in the commentary box a lot. But Chris Rickenden, despite only having two points to his name, is very much in the mix. Yeah, the last two results, the way they went, means Chris is still in it. If someone's on eight points, it becomes difficult. But now, looking at the table, look, he's going to have to have a big day tomorrow. But he's still there. If he can win five from five, at worst, he may squeeze through with four from five. But it's looking very, very congested in there, and it's going to be close. How much do you think he's going to rule those 2-0 leads let slip early on in the day? Oh, massively, because he was playing well, as, but the wheels just came off in both games, which says to me there's something amiss that maybe mentally switched off or tuned it up, I've done the job. But if it happened once, you can go, yeah, fair enough. But it, two games in a row says to me something went wrong. As far as Cord is concerned, is he going to be the player that comes out of this most disappointed today? Possibly, but also the way he salvaged it at the end, getting himself into contention, he can take strength from that as well, because he started really, really well. Good average, although he lost in the opener, then got two points. Yes, the two games after that weren't up to the standard that we've seen him in Group A, but then to come through that and win his last game, mm -hmm. take the positives and look at that and go, hang on a minute, I finished the session well, go into tomorrow and attack it. Most certainly. So that is Group C. That's going to resume at one o'clock tomorrow on the Super Series YouTube channel, then live on Sporty Stuff TV from free. But our focus tonight is going to be on Group B. And what a group we've got in store for you as well from 10 o'clock this evening. This is the tournament brackets. We reach the halfway point of week seven of Series 5. That sounds crazy to say, I have to say. Uh, this is Group B then this evening. Ricky's brother, Ryan, is going to be a part of the Palmer Party at the Super Series. And the player, I think, who's going to harbour most of the headlines coming in is going to be Mike Gillett played some really good stuff for the British Open in the weekend and on that WDF circuit and we've seen it here as well at the Super Series it's in some very good form. He does he finds a way here at the Super Series and that's kind of what I judge people's form on whether they're doing it on the ADC or the WDF it's what you do mm -hmm. here because it is a unique environment especially without a crowd until Saturday so if you've done it here regularly and consistently I think it gives you, a, gives you an up over the others and we've seen Mike time and time again find a way to get to Saturday night's final. Look, it's a tough group, but can he do it? Absolutely. Now, I might get it's one of those maybe that goes a bit more traditional for things. Definitely not the case when it comes to Tommy Lishman because he lit this tournament up last time he was here. He was going for extravagant things at extravagant times. He had fire, he had flair, and he's coming back here tonight. Oh, he's a maverick. Let's, let's have it right. He does it off the cuff. There's no set plans where some players, I'm going this way for this finish. He goes up there and just looks at numbers and go, I'm going this way, I'm going that way. We will get celebrations. When he misses, we'll know that he's disappointed. I'm looking forward to it. I mean, we're talking about Tommy Lishman, the Maverick Flair, but look, he's coming here to, to pick up the victory. And having had that first experience, second time round, you, I suppose you kind of then want to up the expectation levels and move on to qualify for Saturday nights and then eventually going on to win weeks. Oh, absolutely. And we listen to players that come here on debut and they go, they don't know what to expect, but they grow into it. If they qualify for Saturday night, the first time of asking, it's a massive bonus. But once you know what to expect and what you're doing, the next step is get to Saturday night because this place will be packed as always. And it's then about entertaining £5,000 for a Saturday night and that place in Champions Week. Kevin Paint, a really strong day yesterday. will feel much better about his chances tonight. He will, but he needs to find that consistently. Across the three days of Group A, we saw different ends of the scale and he needs to close that together. It, 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 was, it was too big. The range was, was miles out at times where we saw 77s, but we also saw 96, 97s. 
that needs to come up. He needs to be mid 80s to that 97 range for me to come out of this group. Can we possibly lay the same blame at the door of Haruki Muramatsu at points in the group? Yeah, possibly, but I thought Muramatsu was more consistent. The, the temperament is there where Kevin, again, not, not a very good poker player because we see him live every emotion. We know what he's feeling, where Muramatsu, we don't. It's just the same all the time. For me, I think Muramatsu comes out of Group B quite comfortably. I think he's the most consistent in there, and I think it's consistency that is going to be key across Group B. Most certainly, and that is going to be our attention at 10 o'clock tonight here on the Super Series YouTube channel and on Sporty Stuff TV. It's been great to be up here on the balcony with you, Phil. It's been a little while since we've done this. Yes, yeah, it's, it's been a while since I've been able to come back. And look, I love coming here, talking darts, whether it's here with you or on comms with, with Chris. It just makes a nice change. I'm sure me and you together on a balcony is going to make one of those boxing podcasts very happy indeed. Right, we'll see you from 10 o'clock here on the Super Series YouTube channel and on Sporty Stuff TV for great. Group B, which gets underway. But as far as Group C is concerned, well, nothing can split them. There's four at the top. We'll see you tonight. So 12 players came to the Modus Live Land in Portsmouth across the week to contest across three separate groups, all with the hope of being in the position that both the players on the stage are now in. Luke Littler, 16-year-old on debut, gaining TV experience at every juncture. He's played in the UK Open and the WDF World Championship, taking on a man who has plenty of experience Second, on the big stage. Ladies and gentlemen, first leg is Luke to throw first. Game on. Richard North signed off the last match with a weekly best for him and also the third best of the week, that 105 One average. Forty. Giving him a running average for the night of 93.55. Luke Littler not yet found his best. A running 27. average of 85.19 and a checkout percentage of 30%. But if there's one thing we know about Luke Littler, he knows how to win titles. I certainly won't want to be tasked with 57. dusting his trophy cabinet. <laughs> yeah, and you just you almost just wait for him to, to find that, that extra gear, which he, he did ultimately find in the end hey, against Nathan Gervin in the other semi-final. Now we've seen all week when someone's gone and posted a big 100-plus average. 96. When they come to the next game, they've not been able to replicate it. And the longer that break was going on for Richard North, I think that could be more of a negative because he'd be having that little bit of time to sort of cool off. He would have just wanted to have gone back, got Luke, said, come on, pal, let's get straight back on the stage again. Yeah, and that's, ex that's exactly the, the point I was making with, with Henry upstairs is he would have wanted to just get straight on with it. He wouldn't wanted to... Like I say, time to, to cool off. It would have been a case of, right, get me, just get me straight back up there. I'm, I'm hot. Game shot on the first Speaking leg. of hot, this is a very Luke hot Littler. start from Luke Littler. A 14 darter to hold. Richard North is going to break. He's going to need to find a 12 darter to do that one. So he can sort of just roll with the punches Second of that. Second leg first. Game on. Do you think they're... Final group game. Has any kind of relevance in this? I don't think it does. It was played in a completely different atmosphere and environment. It was quite jovial and friendly. 47. If you haven't seen that game, I'd advise watching it. But it, it was fun. It, it was, was it was a fun watch. 
140. It was, it was great to see the, uh, the player's personality coming out. 180. Aren't you supposed to be nervous in finals? <laughs> Not him. That is his ninth. 180 100. of the night. He's only played three complete matches in a best of seven format. Might be about to hit double figures. 140. We know he's got this in the locker. We've seen it many places before, but to see him delivering it like this under these circumstances is incredible. 140. Lucar, 134. Ninety-four, Richard Ducar eighty. Will he go top to top again? Top to tops again. He does, you've got to be careful not to throw this one off the board. Much safer dart there, and the right thing for Richard North. That's a huge mistake Lucar followed by 40. a second huge mistake. He's not even left a double here, just in case Game Luke Littler the misses. But Luke Littler. the way he's playing, there's no sign of Luke Littler missing. That is a fourteen. Followed by a 13, which equates to an average of 111. He's doing to Northy what Northy just did to Merckx. Came on. One out of them 40. He is currently relentless. 77. Very special performance. And there uh, doesn't look to be any letter. Three legs played. 3180's hit as the average climbs to 120. Well, it would be a little ironic that 45. we have the leader in terms of highest average ever here at the Super Series. 57. Jason Askew. He was in action this week. 16. Look at your car, 124. 84. He's not thinking about averages. He's thinking about winning this match. If he was thinking about averages, he'd have gone 14 ball. I think the only thing he's probably thinking about right now is what he's going to spend his £5,000 on because. Get a, well, you could a lot of stuff with that when you're 16. Game shot on the third leg. Luke Littler. 13 data. This is incredible. Average 112.72. If there was any doubt about the sheer pedigree and quality that game on. Luke Littler possesses, we say all the time, you don't always need your A game. You need to be able to win with a B game. That's what he's done tonight. He hasn't 96. got to this position tonight by playing his brilliant best. He's got to this position by being a winner, by using that B game, and now is in a position that he goes, Sorry, 46. now we'll press the button, now we'll hit the afterburner. 41. And how? 14, 13, 13. 139. I was just about to say, and a 180 in each leg. Maybe I'll put one in here. 45. You are watching a very special dart player here. One that we can't really compare to too many other people. 59. But one of the people we can compare him to, the story, the journey he's on, and the way he's doing it, is a multiple-time world champion. One of the greatest players that has ever lived, Michael Van Gerwen. He is on that journey. Yeah, it's pathway. 140. Could be very similar. With performances like this, 41. who's going to stop him on Look Champions Week? 117. So he does have six darts to book his place there. Game yeah. shot on the match. He the, the job in 15 darts with 117. Check out. An average of 109.31. The only thing we've seen like that was from Scott Taylor. He's going to be uh, as good as Phil Taylor. Who knows? But it is Luke Littler who gets it done in emphatic fashion.